Even <laughs> um, and this this is the Flat Out Fever podcast. Welcome, forty three, forty three, forty three, wow. episode forty three on Tuesday, January nineteenth, twenty sixteen. I like how you put the date in there. Ah, yeah, buddy, makes the it relevant. <laughs> and the year, wow. And the year. Yeah, well, how, yeah. How it's is January it that? How is you it, got it right. How is it that late in uh, in January already? Anyway, it's juicy. If you, oh, man, this. So good, so, <laughs> so good. I know you. Like, you just been waiting, you, man. This is the kind like of like half an hour before the show started. He was just like, "Oh, guys, just to wait, just to wait." I got too much. Good. It was too much that came out, man. <laughs> too much juice. Oh, it's so good. This finally came. Oh my god. So it's it's the kind of the kind of news that only comes out every once in a while. You just want to go and sink your teeth right into it. So we'll go right to Geneva, where um <laughs> there was the most recent uh, series of meetings of the big wigs in Formula One. Oh, now if you guys remember, we big wigs. Uh, the, 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 a very large <laughs> yeah, exactly uh we have been talking about this for like basically since uh the 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 winter lull and before that mm -hmm. um because what what came out back then is that bernie and his allies on one end were trying to push uh for 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 you know under the guise of a more affordable engine they were trying to push for a different engine mm. an, an alternate engine um and and his allies Particularly, this is strongest ally uh, is Red Bull. We've we've we we already know this. Uh, uh, Christian Horner and Bernie are very close mm. to the point that BFFs. If, yeah, well, <laughs> basically, like Christian Horner apparently attends every meeting that does, every important meeting that Bernie does. Anyway, uh, he, some may say that he might take over Bernie after Bernie, you know. Right. Kicks it, um, <laughs> but unless he turns into a machine, really wrinkly. <laughs> yeah, that's, true. that's <laughs> half man, half Formula One car. <laughs> His consciousness uploaded into the into the car. Uh, <laughs> um, but so so they they, they they came up with this proposal that um, the the alternate engine was scrapped. Uh, b uh, like due to pressure from the manufacturers mm. uh, on Bernie, and eventually Bernie rallied up with Jean Todd, and they got they, they formed up a, a big stink. Uh, and then at the latest World Motorsport uh, Sport Council meeting, they decided, all right, Bernie, you and um, or sorry, uh, they, they said the manufacturers, you guys have till the fifteenth um, of January to come up with a solution for cheaper engines, or if you don't, then uh, what's uh, what's going to happen is that uh, on the 30th of January, we're going to give power to Ecclestone and Todd to make any change they want. Listeners, from the recording date, we're talking five days ago, four and a half days. What? The 15th. Well, the 15th. It was Friday. The deadline, yeah. It was Friday. So Friday. let's say if, let, last Friday, right? right. Uh, so la la last Friday was that deadline. But what, happened, what had to happen uh, that day was uh, basically – the representatives from the four manufacturers, Mercedes, Ferrari, Renault, and Honda, okay. met exclusively behind closed doors in Geneva, I'm assuming, uh, <laughs> with... Um, that big green door we were showing. No, that, 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 is, that, is, that is in, 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 in Paris. Yeah, and, I know, and this is significant, too. So anyway, they, they, met, they met in Geneva, oh, right, right, right. Um, in Switzerland, um, and it was basically so that the manufacturers showed Bernie their offer and that meeting a lot of people are, are, are talking about like what came out of like the meetings that happened uh, yesterday and today but that meeting on friday was way more important mm. than anything because that's that's when it was decided what just happened the last couple of days was it was just formalizing it and 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 whatever and making you know writing it into law but that meeting between the manufacturers and bernie and jean todd exclusively that's that's when the action that's where the action happened. I imagine a lot of like cigars and <laughs> old old whiskey and very nice glasses. Oh, or oh, nice. to the very least, probably a lot of yelling too. Yeah, as yeah, well. you think so? Oh yeah. You don't think it's civilized? I would think so. <laughs> oh no, they, they call them the Piranha Club. 
to be yeah. speaking. <laughs> 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 Holy shit! These yeah. guys, when these guys meet, meet together, yeah, it's it's it's, it's supposed to be a, a shit show, and it continues for so long. It's like a they could be in there all day, like just going back and forth. It's the cheating is the billionaires. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, sorry, guys. Um, a couple of things did come out though from that from yeah. uh, from from that meeting. So what, whatever it is that that they that they fought and whatever that get they, it got agreed, um, and then they took it to on, on Monday yesterday. They took it to um, the F one strategy group, and the F one strategy group then uh, passed it on to the F one commission. Um, if you guys remember, we we also had been talking about. Um, the strategy group from from last year from last year right around this time like i made a like i made a pretty lengthy piece on like how the strategy group was made up uh and the the key thing is that the strategy group has t uh, votes from the teams the fia and bernie mm. right and um, before uh all you needed to do um or actually like to, to pass anything from the strategy group it had to have unanimous uh agreement so we, we either one one party could veto it Hmm. now right. it just has to have simple majority and that's what made the difference for this year's and on ru rules it had to have they only had to have a simple majority so what happened is um that even if bernie had wanted or any single party had wanted to block any rule um if the if most people wanted it to happen it'll it'll go through and same with uh um with the f1 commission the f1 commission basically just ratifies they can't add to it or anything they can do right. say yes or no and right. obviously they were going to say yes um but a couple of, couple of interesting things came out hot hot off the press hot yes. off the oven with this oh, wow <laughs> that's hot so <laughs> yeah <laughs> one of them that's really really important uh is is going to be that the teams or the manufacturers actually agreed on supplying the teams um with cheaper engines to the tune of 20 million euros per year for the supply of a power engine okay right so wasn't the goal 10 the, the goal could have been uh, 10 but 12 actually was actually 12, uh, I, 12 I, heard, I heard 12 a compromise we yeah. talked about last week mm -hmm. yeah but so 20 sounds like that sounds double. Like a lot. that sounds like double well no but it's it's down uh from about 35 uh, 20 or something yeah like. the 20 to 25, 25 that yeah. like most teams spend mm -hmm. for the whole year right uh so that's that's down that's gonna help I don't know some teams a lot, but you know some teams have budgets of like hundreds of millions. So yeah, if you hear that, I'm sh I'm sure I'm sure it does help. Um, but uh, and 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 it is what some people want. Is it just like a one-time buy sort of thing, or yeah, is it like, like a so subscription? -based I, 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 like a, yeah, like a yearly <laughs> a, a yearly contract where you like say yeah, twelve million over the year, but like the exchange of the money, like the fine details of that, like okay, that's up to the lawyers to to figure out. Yeah. Right, and the reason the reason I <coughs> the reason I said thirty or thirty five is so you take whatever like the Renaults at the start of this year, you you send a contract for a certain number of engines, but obviously people like us people outside of a handful of people in the world get to see those contracts nobody but say i sell you four engines mm -hmm. or eight i guess you got two cars for the whole year you're allowed to use four engines and you blow one up where's the fifth one come from you got to keep driving right right and uh, you're just out yeah look at like red bull there and honda were into the eights and nines yeah they're running out of names yeah. <laughs> and running out of <laughs> Twitter accounts is getting tedious for uh, them. So I, I have a question for all these personalities concerning you know? 2017 because I know that's a big year for Formula One, where a lot of things are going to change. Now, how does that factor in into that? You have a very concerned look on your face that worries uh, me, <laughs> and I don't think it was because of my question. No, 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 no. Um, well, that's what these, sorry, that's what these talks are about. Are about. Yeah. So oh, the factors for 2017, the yeah, engine, right. engine price. Well, it's, it's, it, that, 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 that's what it's gonna be, yeah, okay. and it's gonna be a plan. Exactly. So, oh, like okay. for uh, like to supply as many engines as as whatever team needs. Okay, right. Cool. So this See, is, that, but I don't, I wouldn't buy that. The, no, no. The, yeah, the fifth, because there, there's been even talks floated of lowering the max engines from four to three for a season. Oh yeah, right. And it, it and and we'll get to that. We'll get to that. We'll get right? to that. But though. but if you blow those up and you get more and more likely to blow them up, the longer you try to run each one. That's it's an incentive for the teams to make it more reliable. To make it too. more reliable. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Right. And less crash. But it doesn't sound like a capitalist billionaire's 
you know something that no, they would like to agree to listen there's many layers to this okay yeah, all right we're just, <laughs> I, I know this is your story i'm playing the devil's advocate <laughs> yeah okay all right no, 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 all, for sure. all morning <laughs> <laughs> um it's the mid-afternoon uh so this 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 kind of stuff low, lower beer thank uh, you <laughs> low, lower price for the engines <laughs> that are for the power units okay that's what they that's what a lot of people wanted uh in, in theory they said so that's something that needs to happen they need to be cheaper right mm -hmm. along with that though uh it is also um some sort of a clause that is going to force the team the teams to or sorry the manufacturers to supply all teams so every team has to have an engine so there's not going to be any of this like red bull drama that like red bull for a little bit didn't have an engine or whatever um so right. that's that's not supposed to happen in surface again that's something that for example um uh, that the Bernie and uh, and and uh, Christian Horner were pushing through as well. Like, if if anything, like you know, well, let's 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 make it so that this doesn't happen again. Or at least John Todd uh, was right. was promoting that. Um, so that 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 got passed through. Um, and another thing that the, yeah, what, what you said about the three or two or reducing it to two engines, that's actually something that Max mostly. Uh, was trying to say right from right four to three now yeah so if Every, everybody thought it was crazy for those that don't know 2014 there was a five engine limit yeah in 15 we dropped it to, to, to four and everybody was up in arms when it went 2000, down. 2016 again we'll be at four yeah but there have been proposals to go further to three and that that, that could be something that might eventually like do like make the engines more reliable or push for more reliability but uh apparently uh, mario alien has been said to uh he's he, he's already said that that's not necessarily the case for for many reasons now mario alien is the guy that's supposed to be making Renault engines better right right on the outset of this though um actually a couple other things that, that came out it was that um starting this year Engines are going to be, or sorry, teams are going to be restricted to three gearbox, three gearboxes per season. Right. So that's that's way down, right? Right. Um, and uh, I, if if you just look at that, which is what most uh, most publications are, are reporting right now, you you could think that hey, maybe like you know, Bernie Bernie got you know like these are Bernie's ideas, or this is somewhat some of what Bernie wanted. Mm. It's not so bad. Um, but we just checked with uh, Tobias Gruner, <laughs> Toby. Uh, our friend Toby, uh, just uh, clarified a couple of things. And the, the way it comes out is basically that the manufacturers are happy about this. Hmm. Uh, uh, because w what came out is a, is a continuation of the current formula. Because what they're, what they're, what they're supposed to... Just to, to clarify for, yeah. for our listeners here, like we're, we're talking to Tobias Gruner from AMUS... Yes, <laughs> uh, from Auto Automoto and Sport in Germany. Not just some random person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For, fortunately, like we've been, a we, just to clarify, we've been able to message him this morning. Yeah. We sent, we sent him a, a, a tweet message, and, and and he responded to us with, with his insider answer. Yes. Yeah, we're not just talking out our ass here. No, no, uh, wait. This is um, Do we have an exclusive. Yeah, we have, we have, we have a little bit of an <laughs> exclusive here. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, we're not not talking out our ass. No, for sure. So, so here's the deal: the manufacturers are happy because since these, what they agreed to supply the teams were basically the exact same: 1.6 liters uh, V6 turbo uh, uh, hybrid engines. Um, or s Damn. systems, right? right? Um, and the same size electrical power attached. Yeah, and so they, they might find some cost, uh, cost cuttings by like sharing some parts or whatever, which is kind of what they wanted to do. They were they were trying to like push the agenda that you know we already do this in the auto industry. Like we're gonna mm. don't worry. Like that's, that there there might be some some opportunities there to reduce cost. So they're happy because. They don't have to develop a completely new engine. They can. They don't have to waste all that research and development uh, that they spent, which is what they wanted. Um, it, Mercedes is happy because they keep their advantage so far, right? Because they, it, it, the whole point is that right now, if if it is the way it is right now, and you just extend that model, Mercedes is going to be, is, is still going to have the advantage next year and probably the year after even, right? Sorry, guys. All right. Good. Um, so Mercedes is happy, and uh, a lot of the teams like 
they can afford to lose a bit of money, right? Like they they're, they're basically all right, fine. Here, let's so, have that cost reduction. Okay. So, since you've been our lead researcher on this topic, yeah. so I am Toro Russell, mm-hmm. 2016. I'm running a 2015 Ferrari engine. Okay. Right. Yeah. 2017 runs around. New regulations come into place. Uh-huh. Am I running a 2017 Ferrari engine? Is that the regulation, or is Ferrari still free to sell me the 2016 or maybe even the 2015 at an even further reduced cost? If yeah. I think I can compete on the chassis or aero side and make it work, listen, the 20, save some the, money on the engine. We already know that that they that they that the teams are allowed to run last year's engines. That's already that, that already passed from the last World Motorsport Council right. meeting. That right. that wasn't even in contention this year, this time around. My my yeah. devil's advocate point here from uh, <laughs> and just my my desire to see more competition is. There is no legislation written in that says any engine you sell has to be this year's. Correct. But if no, a, they, if they, a they team are. says, I want to buy your engine, it must be made available. No. And that's, that, that, yeah, right. that's, okay. where, that's, that's where it comes. To, that's, where the, 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 that's where it becomes. There's three, three distinct angles to look at this. Oh, absolutely. One point. <clears throat> and I don't think all three have been fully defined. Listen, <laughs> what happens is that Ferrari is also this. happy at this because the way the numbers stack up right now, um, like what, what Ferrari doesn't want is to give uh, Red Bull an engine or to be forced to give Red Bull an engine. Right. And same you with have, Mercedes. You would have thought, and, 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 and what, what, uh, what Jean, uh, Jean Todd and Bernie Eccleston or whatever, like uh, that, whole, that whole team was trying to promote it. So, yes, teams should be fo- forced to supply the entire field with engines. Um, right. right, and the ones that they want. Yeah, if, if you but say I want the, the 2016, thing, I can afford that. Yeah, I don't want the zero percent lease 2015 model. E- either right. way, the the way like just 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 to stick into that, um, if Red Bull wanted to like have a Ferrari engine or whatever, right, Ferrari could very well even the the, the way things uh, will be, right? If they are right now, they can still say we're we're already providing to too many people. Uh, uh, Honda isn't providing to enough people. Re- uh, Renault isn't re- uh, providing to enough people. Take theirs, because that's how they made it equitable. They have like, they they, it's it's it has to be balanced. So all teams have to provide to the field. So if there's teams out there that don't have, they have to go to like uh, don't have an engine right now. They have to go to the people that haven't given away enough engines, i.e. Red Bull or Renault. So that's 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 Ferrari. And Mercedes this is the way show. that Ferrari and Mercedes have teamed up. To maintain their legal advantage. Oh yeah! In oh this yeah. Whole thing. yeah! Oh yeah! The losers of this decision, uh, according to Toby, is a, or uh, are Red Bull and Ecclestone, because Bernie wanted a more powerful and louder engine. Uh, Red Bull won't get the Mercedes or Ferrari engines, even if uh, because for, uh, Mercedes and Ferrari they can both say we already have enough customers, right? Um, that's the. But further than that, the manuf- What happens is the manufacturers still have the control over over F one. All right? right, because they can decide anything with the help of their customers now. Right, because they don't need they don't need uh, the unanimous vote in the strategy group. And what what came out is that still the engine formula is too expensive and complicated for any like independent manufacturer to come in and like and and say like oh I wanna I, w- I wanna make an engine like a cost worth. That's still not gonna happen. That's what that's right. what Bernie really wanted to happen. It still has to be somebody like Renault or mm-hmm. Honda who's selling. Hundreds of thousands or millions of road cars, yeah, and can get the money back on hybrid technology, yeah, right. And apparently, Jean Todd eventually, even though he was kind of sided with Bernie, he's happy because this is still remember his idea of the hybrid engines and to try to give a cleaner image to F1, which is like, which is which is bullshit. Everybody knows that. Like right. we, we've talked about how like that's bullshit because it takes so much more in gas and money to transport these engines around, right. The lithium cost, the <laughs> mining of lithium, blah, 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 all the way down, all the way down. Yeah. Yeah. Just, and end of the day, it sells road cars. Yeah, that's the hope. Or, or it will in a few years. In a few years, Once maybe. Once this technology, yeah, rolls out, rolls out, improves itself. It's, it's, it's a bunch of interesting stuff because now you can see that uh, Bernie at one point, and, th- and this was from way back, uh, he had tried to call the... Uh, uh, call Ferrari's bluff the entire time and say like whatever if you want to leave leave like 
you gotta you you, you, you want to come on for problems here like the manufacturers have too much power that's that's that was his whole rhetoric and he he had been going hard and saying and i would have thought that like he had a point like if if they if they actually did take um the case to the european commission or to uh or to arbitration they would have had some sort of a leeway um but actually when we read about it like when, when we talked about uh remember that they can get away with doing anything as long as it's good for good for the show and good for the spectators right that immediately alone gives a lot a lot of power to ferrari right mm. so they are red yeah <laughs> that's, a, that's the color of party <laughs> exactly and they don't want to leave they didn't want to leave the sport but uh, bernie didn't achieve what he really wanted which was to bring back like to to, to take back some control from the manufacturers right right which which is pretty crazy. I mean, all of this has basically been leading to that. Another thing that they that they agreed is that they're not gonna touch these rules until 2020, or rather than the the rules um, that they decide on 2018 are basically gonna stay pretty much static for three years until 2020. This, of course, is because all manufacturers like there's there's this old saying, right? That like if you if you let the rules static for long enough, uh, the field will bunch up. That is what they say you know that's what that's what people up and down the f1 paddock if you want if you like um watch enough f1 shows around here around now they'll there'll be somebody that's gonna say like oh you know like if you if you let the regulation static for long enough uh, the field will, will bunch up is that is that necessarily yeah. true i don't know if that's necessarily true though maybe not as much as it used to be because of how much electric <laughs> sorry, electric and gas powered technology is just branched there's so many areas to make up time and performance and mm -hmm. innovate. But what you're saying is, is interesting. Pat Simmons, the, mm -hmm. uh, the chief of chief, chief technical officer at, uh, at Williams, Williams. Yeah. He's been the first one to come out and say, because these new rules, the 2017 rules are due to be set at the beginning of March mm -hmm. on the 1st of March. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Here's a quote from him. I'd be much happier if things moved on to 2018 rather than 17 for new rules and for, for new rules. And we spend a re sorry, and we spend a year really researching what's needed. But that's probably a cry in the wilderness. So basically, like they're going to they're going to squash. There's two two more big meetings coming up before the rules are set uh, before March 1st. In the next six weeks or so, two more big meetings. Well, that's, that that is when the World Motorsport Council meets. And right. Of and course, yeah. They're, every, they're everything set, that came out of, of Geneva is supposed is it goes to the World Motorsport Council for ratification. Right. They forward and they're gonna do two more rules, but they basically moved beyond the fundamentals of the 2017 revamp. Mm -hmm. It's been, they've gone, according to Simmons here, they moved past the fundamentals. They're working on details. They've got six weeks and two more big meetings to really put down their proposals and solidify what they want to do to revamp the sport for 2017 he's saying we should push it back 2018 which is kind of what you've seen hinted also right oh, yeah so all this shit we've been talking about the past year might get pushed back one extra year the big revamp the big the big, big overhaul the big overhaul there there is gonna be a, a a bit of a rule change in between 2016 and 2017 we know that that there is um but Yes, mo most of the changes might get pushed. Mo the big changes might get pushed back to uh, 2018, which makes sense because mm -hmm. they're gonna need like years to research these things and, and put together like, you know, the, the infrastructure behind if they do anything actually actually revolutionary, right? Which is what they kind of want to do. Anything real substance. Yeah, anything that's actually gonna like make a huge difference because that's a problem right now. Like every time that they go like from year to year, all the teams are saying like we don't have any enough time to like really completely come up with anything. Uh, revolutionary so mm -hmm. and, and and you see that pop up now in the in the stories about the teams they're saying that like oh you know the, the next car the 2016 car is gonna be a nice evolution mm. but not not a revolution and they're using those words very carefully yeah it's interesting yeah. you said like, we're gonna do a little reveals special today but that's what Williams is saying their car is an evolution yeah There's, the, and Williams is pushing now as far as Simmons, he's the first one to go public, pushing for the revolution to be in 2018 now. Mm -hmm. Well, he wants... It, 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 the idea is that they're basically going to... By by opening up the rules, if you open up the rules enough, 
you can create something sufficiently different that the f the fact that it's such a different approach it doesn't matter if everything around it works 100 percent mm. as long as like that one revolutionary idea works it's gonna give you enough time to like build enough of a gap ahead so that by the time the other teams catch up you're already like that much further out and right. like can explore and like you know can fix like whatever was wrong or like whatever might have been wrong with everything right. else but at the same time that advantage is there for everyone everyone's mm -hmm. team hope is that we can get this gap we can come up with an idea we can mm -hmm. jump ahead of everybody right but, if you, have, but, idea, but if you have an f1 you where they get that idea but listen if you have an f1 where the manufacturers are running the show mm -hmm. right which is basically what we right have. now what we have yeah, what we have right now, <laughs> they're not gonna—they're gonna try their darndest to not let that happen, mm -hmm. because the manufacturers. If if you're winning, you like to be winning. You like you yeah. uh, then if you're you winning, keep on winning. Exactly, <laughs> and and winning makes sense. Yeah, you know what I mean. Then, winning gets you money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and winning gives you uh, you know tons of uh, advertising revenue. If you're, mm -hmm. you know, most of the four teams now are like, they're now in the business of selling something or other right mm -hmm. it's but like and the manufacturers obviously cars mm -hmm. uh but now um ferrari for example has uh, uh, branded itself as a luxury goods company Ooh. so who knows what they like what their end game is yeah and clearly they, it, they sergio marchione has decided to stay in f1 yeah despite like bernie like really putting a putting up a fight but cl clearly he won whatever he had to bring to the meeting whatever marchione had to bring and that's that's what everybody has been saying that marchione like maybe is a foe the likes that Bernie had never encountered before, because yes. <laughs> uh, because yes. because he's he's tough and he just like he just goes he does the business. Then if the number makes sense, then uh, he'll go and like he'll find a way. If yeah. he now maybe he decided okay fine we'll, we're staying in F one we'll make it work but this is how like this is what we're gonna get out of it, and they got a pretty good deal, <laughs> if you ask me because they they're gonna get like they're still gonna get. Their huge chunk of money that they get from just participating in F1, mm -hmm. they're gonna have to like maybe lose some money, like a few million here and there, to provide uh, the teams. But they're they, they already have uh, like one of those teams is gonna be Haas. It's yeah. Basically gonna be like their their tester team. They're just gonna test some parts there. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and pass them to Ferrari, you know, or whatever. They're gonna have a mm -hmm. very strong technical association with Haas. Okay. Uh, so that's basically well, so like their like team. That, whole, that Haas car might be coming out in gold, <laughs> which is luxurious. Yeah. I yeah, like there that. you go. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That Alicantara steering wheel. Lots those of stuff to look forward heavy to. Heavy springs on those buttons makes them feel expensive. <laughs> but I still think that a manufacturer controlled F1 is probably in the end not that great for the sport. And I'm not saying that the way it has been it hasn't, re it hasn't resulted in some really good racing like 2014 was a great year mm -hmm. and then like even before that like we had what 2012 was a great year uh for f1 uh in in recent years uh even but i think that what everybody actually wants is like just most like more close competition now some people are like coming up with ridiculous ideas about how to how to how to achieve that mm -hmm. um but uh uh, th th there is an element that the manufacturers maybe don't necessarily have an incentive to keep um, the spectator as a top priority. Right. Other than like, you know, as the fact that like, if nobody watches F1, then, then who are you going to, who are you advertising to? Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so they like can't Mercedes constantly self-preservation basically. Yeah. Mercedes, even people don't watch though. They do yeah. things like <clears throat> they'll have a magazine article with a photo of a shiny F1 car looking like it's going fast. <laughs> and they'll say, like, whatever. The, you can post your results in a magazine article that a lot of people will see or a billboard, yeah. something like that, right? Or they tie themselves into their watch, like Red Bull, like like, like, a, like a clock, runs like a clock or whatever, you know, kind of keeps you going past midnight or what, and show a clock of a tag hoyer and you drink some Red Bulls or... <laughs> There's all kinds of tie-ins. That's what they're. Well, that's, do, do that's you, what they're racing for. Oh, for sure. Do you work for marketing? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, I don't have a job right now. You guys can hire me if you're listening. Whoever, whoever has jobs out there, if you're hiring some people. Um, this is all above board, of course. Yes. Right. Uh, we're, we're definitely gonna keep an eye on what's gonna happen, and obviously, I, I don't think Bernie went down fully without a fight. Mm. He must. He must have. I mean. 
but the way that things stack up right now, it does look like he was the bigger loser from that meeting. He got nothing that he wanted to get out of it, and neither did Christian Horner. And maybe, maybe Christian Horner. I don't know. I don't know if he's questioning his alliance with Bernie right now. I don't know. They're gonna they're gonna have to win some races to get some power back. That's 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 the way it seems like it is. You know, yeah. the, the winners are telling telling everybody what what the way it's gonna be. But so the, what I what I meant though is this being above board mm-hmm. is uh, everybody knows recently the FIA or sorry FIFA FIFA mm-hmm. FIFA and a related body the IAAF the International Association of Athletics Foundation they oversee all the track and field pole vaulting and running fast all the weird and sports. yeah running fast <laughs> swimming <laughs> fastest all that the, anyway they've seen a lot of controversy. Mm. In the past year to FIFA with slavery type stuff, yeah, building, building stadiums and uh, et cetera, whatever. IAAF, similar controversies with uh, performance enhancing drugs and their oversight. So anyways, the FIA this past week, three or four days ago, mm-hmm. under jean Tad have hired an independent oversight company to do a full audit of their of their uh, actions, including these types of meetings at Geneva, their relationships with uh, the World Motorsport Council above them and below them, the obviously Formula One and every other motorsport that's under the FIA in the world. Quote from Jean Todd is, I have asked, this is, this is out of, you know, there's a, there's a whole in- interview with Jean Todd, who's the, the current president of the FIA. This is the sentence I found interesting. I have asked a specific audit company to have a look at our organization. And if they feel they can advise on some improvements, then I'm very happy to take them on board. But just the Whoa. first part of that, I've oh, asked a weird. specific audit company to take a look at our organization. Yeah, I got this Without bloody. specifying. <laughs> yeah. yeah, before we started the show, I had a Google around the internet, around the Google, and I couldn't find anything about who it might be. <laughs> so really maybe uh, maybe that'll these, come out this is a new story and auditors can be bought don't yeah like, don't even right. worry yeah, exactly. about it the whole the whole he's reason he's asked a very specific one that he met it's, back it's, in college you know they, they lived thing, together they, for like, these, these these guys like will skew the numbers yeah. for everybody yeah, from from course. anybody and everybody like that's that's the whole reason apparently that uh um uh, that Greece got into the apparently Greece country now in the shithole and yeah, like yeah. like right right now dragging all of Europe behind. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, th- they weren't supposed to get into the European Union or in, uh, or, or, or the eurozone, um, and, but and then they they, they hired this um, uh, this audit company independent audit company third party like, yeah like this third party to come by do an assessment their assessment ignored a whole bunch of shit like they just like willfully like neglected to like mention like a bunch of facts like and 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 oh yeah the out- places are dumb yeah the the outcome of it was that greece eventually joined the euro and yeah. now years later look at what happened yeah. <laughs> so obviously the two possible outcomes of this well the whole the whole situation really are that FIA is doing something below board mm-hmm. and have hired their friends to jump the gun and get get audited <coughs> before they get audited. Allegedly. We have right. to Allegedly. Like uh, audit themselves before they get audited mm-hmm. and prove that their, their structure is sound, etc. cetera. Uh, I think we're like about to like do like the chop. Oh, the chop? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so do I. So uh, guys, we're we're experiment- experimenting with this new format uh, where we're gonna like make like shorter episodes, um, and I guess like I don't know like that's that's pretty much all I had to say about Geneve's. Yeah, this is this is my final point. Basically, the FIA is auditing themselves before they get themselves audited. Uh, it's possible they're completely above board. Everything's cool and their structure is sound and democratic, and everything's really cool. Down. But it's possible that they want to hide some things, hire their friends to prove that they're cool and take some suggestions, <laughs> maybe a few soft ones, fix them publicly. Yeah. And uh, duck and move a little bit. The, the, the most political sport in the world just became a little bit more political, <laughs> as we always say. <laughs> All right. Anyways, yeah, we're trying some... This will be probably the first one of the only times we have to explain this. Uh, yeah. But I guess we're going to segue into our next segment in a separate video. 
Uh, stay tuned if you're watching live right now. Uh, we are coming back in just a couple minutes, and we're going to talk about something else, uh, probably testing or something. Yeah, testing. Many, many things coming up today. All righty. Cool. We'll see you guys. <laughs> we're back. <laughs> we're back. Two B, forty three B, alpha alpha numeric. Yeah, I guess so. Well, only only for now. The, the people that will be listening to this on in, uh, as a podcast, as an audio podcast, would have just heard the end of the last one and the beginning of this one. All right, they're still listening. It is the forty third third episode. We're just Let's chopping so. it in in, in 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 little bits, and now we're Slide talking about fever dot com. We're new with this new format, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, let's talk, let's talk about Pirelli and testing. Okay. So basically, the wet test we talked about last week. Yeah. It's coming up on the 25th and 26th of January. So soon. At Paul Ricard, that'll be coming up soon. So I guess there's been some confirmation. Very little coverage. Yeah. Apparently, it's media free. Hopefully, some of these media guys will be hanging out outside the gate, yeah. get some pictures through the fence, maybe talk to some people going in and out. Some details, maybe we'll we'll, we'll find out. But uh, in-season tire testing, Pirelli originally asked for, what was it, 16 days? Something crazy. Yeah, a lot. A lot of days. Yeah. Uh, there will be some days given. Mm -hmm. They are to be confirmed, though. So, w yeah, we're, we're not really sure any details about that but Pirelli on the other hand we mentioned previously the first three races w since we started talking about the whole new tire system for this year Pirelli had announced the tire selections for the first three races of the year which is Australia Bahrain and China mm -hmm. which will be running the medium soft and super soft tires right so the whole the whole idea everyone knows about the new purple ultra soft tires <laughs> was to introduce some variety into the racing. Those are probably not gonna come out like until Monaco. Right, right. But we added a, a an extra compound, add some variety to the racing. Yeah. Ferrari have announced. Uh, sorry, Pirelli have announced the tire selections for Russia, the Russian race. Oh, up until Russia. Yeah, the fourth race. They have, they released it. So I think. What it, I forget the number, but there's a minimum weeks before each race they have to announce the tires. Yeah. Russia has fallen into that. They will be, surprise, mm -hmm. the medium, soft, and super soft tires. So, so at least for the first four races, we'll be racing on all those three compounds. Medium, soft, and super soft. But obviously, it's still completely up in the air. So remember how, how uh, before <laughs> they used to call... Uh, the, cause they only had two compounds per race. They <laughs> yeah, used they used to have two. Yeah, they used to call the hardest compound uh, prime, and then the softest compound they used to call it option. That's just like yeah, yeah, that was just like I don't know. That's it just F one team the nomen tires. nomenclature. F yeah, that's yeah. Yeah, the commentators the would call it like that. Yeah, that was just like the language that they used. I wonder what what they're gonna do now with this third one in between. Yeah, <laughs> the subprime. <laughs> Uh, there, there'll be there's got to be some new words or super option. The super, I love super option. <laughs> <laughs> Must be the super options. <laughs> yeah, because certain cars, depending on your downforce levels, your chassis, whatever you select to bring to that race, you choose your tires. Right, you could run less downforce on and also a tire. In interesting is you have to use at least two of the compounds, but not like you can use the three compounds during a race, but you can use a lead, like you don't have to use them all. You can use right. just two. You have to use one of the two selected by Pirelli. Yeah. Plus, if you're in the top 10, at least thank you three of the tire that you st start the race on with the tire that you qualified in Q2 on. Mm -hmm. You set your fastest time. It's all up in the air. Yeah. The first four races, anyways, we're going to see the, f the same three compounds. Goddamn. Preseason. No, no creativity there, Pirelli. Come on. No. <laughs> Preseason testing is being locked at eight days. So I guess we'll re just recap. February 22nd, mm. so about uh, five weeks from now, we'll be seeing the first tests. Mm. 22nd to the 25th in, in Spain, Barcelona. Yeah. And again, March 1st, uh, not too long after, I guess a week later, we'll be back in Spain for another four days. Yeah. All um, in Barcelona. It used to be Jerez de la Frontera before and then Barcelona. But uh, that's, that's right. changed. Even, uh, was it two years ago, they, they did one of the tests in Bahrain. Yeah. Right, yeah, but then they like decided for cost cutting. They took there's a lot of shipping to get everything to Bahrain and blah, mm. etc. That makes sense. Now uh, right. Sauber is even saying that they're gonna show up 
with uh, uh well, let, yeah. let's save that because i want to i want to do today yeah. a reveals a, re, a little reveal segment okay, 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 okay. but let, let's just, let's finish this out with the uh the two in-season tests have been locked now mm-hmm. okay so the first one will take place in may after the spain race so the the uh, FIA regulations for this year state that there will be two in-season tests after two races, which must take place at a track where a race has just take place, taken place within 72 hours of that race. Oh, shit. So both of the in-season tests will take place on a Tuesday and Wednesday mm-hmm. of the week. The first one being in Spain again. So the third test will be in Barcelona. May 17th and 18th the uh tuesday and wednesday of that week (laughs) and again in july right before canada right and it's very close and then again in july Mm -hmm. we'll be on the 12th and 13th after the british race at silverstone okay with a distinct possibility that maybe for one of the first times ever this test will be public in britain oh shit! open to the public which most of them they're closed to the press even right yeah but there's a possibility of this july 12th and 13th tuesday wednesday test in britain being open to the public and there's a stipulation we've mentioned this before but two out of those four days of in-season testing must be by young drivers so non-race or testing drivers oh shit so yeah do they two out of those four days that's either two at one two at each team has their own choice whatever they can do right. two at silverstone and two at Spain and Barcelona, or one and one, or whatever oh, whatever combination oh, okay, they choose. Cool. Either way, but two out of the four days must be driven by young drivers. And That's good. I believe I believe good. the option to participate is open as well. But obviously, each team mm. wants well, as I mean, many hours running as they can. Right? Yeah, but uh, for, for example, they, those that can afford. Uh, Manor missed a couple of uh, uh, of tests uh, this year or last year in 2015 because it didn't have money. Another segment I'd like to touch on today, though, yeah. is the revampation. The oh. revolution of manner, Marusha. That's it's very interesting, but that's uh, sticking to to testing. And I <laughs> I think that I find funny is that some teams right now they they they're allowed uh you know by 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 their F one contracts or whatever mm. they're allowed to have these filming days where they are they are allowed to take like a car or some car out and do like filming, but a lot of uh, you know for promotional purposes, right? Right. right yeah. Um, a lot of the teams actually tried to sneak in testing some parts. <laughs> <laughs> Good for them. <laughs> right. Good for uh, them. W- one that was clearly like was more just about the publicity and like the the show was uh, Max Verstappen's re- recent foray into the snow. Uh, oh, yeah. We talked about this. About? We, we, we kind of touched it uh, on it last week in la- last week's show because you you saw the picture but Separate we never segment? we never saw this show we never saw, saw, saw like the, the the actual um no, okay, let's Maybe just put it up now let's put it up now it's um in the book okay let, while, you, while you find that link let's save that fun for one second because this is related mm. this is the last thing i wanted to talk about and it's definitely not as fun as driving a fucking formula one car on a fucking ski hill because <laughs> <laughs> those videos are badass yeah but before you play that one yeah. second uh, this week, on uh, yesterday, I believe. Yeah, th- this yeah okay. this was yesterday. Yeah, just before before you hit play on that. It's not it's not on. Okay, good. okay, We're okay, good. okay. No, he was freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sebastian Vettel was driving around a Ferrari, the F fourteen T. Yeah, the two year old car at Fiorano, mm-hmm. which is Ferrari's per- personal testing track. So I just want to clarify this. This sort of counts as a testing. But I brought up, I pulled up the uh, sporting regulations. Article 10.2 of the sporting uh, regulations is testing of previous cars, which they abbreviate TPC. Mm. Uh, Basically, if you can, testing of previous cars encompasses for this year the testing of a 2012 2013 or 2014 model car. Yeah, you can, you have to go far you enough, can, but not too far. Right, you can you can run your 2011 and 10s or the older cars as much or whenever you want. But this is not the full regulation. But Article 10.2 of the 2016 Sporting Regulation says, in order that the FIA observer may be appointed, so the FIA wants to see what the fuck you're doing. Because as, as Jay said, sometimes they run the old cars and try to sneak in, like, wedge in an old a new part there <laughs> and test it out. <laughs> 
where, where possible, competitors must inform the FIA of any planned TPC, testing a previous car, test at least 72 hours before it's due to commence and the following information shall be provided. And I know this from my trade. The word shall means you will do that. Yeah. You're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna One, do that. precise specification of the car or cars to be used. Precise. The name or names of the drivers, if known, which is a huge loophole, obviously, mm-hmm. uh, for any lawyers that are listening. The nature of the test. So why are you turning this car on? For the dates and intended duration of the test. So you can't just do whenever you want. Make sure that guy is there when you're testing. And five, the purpose. What is the reason you're testing? <laughs> so Ferrari might have specified that uh, Vettel will be driving this specific 2014 car around our track on this day. But what the the purpose was, who knows? Yeah, you can. You can Maybe just they could call it exercise. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he, he needs to. He. he you know, just she. to make sure this engine doesn't get too rusty. You know. Yeah. You know like, uh, oh, so I, Sebastian I, Vettel, he needs to practice. He's our he's our big guy. We're all hopes in Sebastian Vettel is for him to to not lose his driving skills. I got I got an odd question. Yeah, uh, of course. How, um, in the off season, do racers get in like hop in a Formula One car at all? No, he can't. He just did. Wait, 2014 but like, car. But even before, uh, may, would they have ever done that? Uh, Ferrari has a badass simulator. Oh, okay, uh, but no any, actual any, car. No, no. Not, no it, the, the, the F1 car the, the F1 cars of uh, the current year or even the past year are under such strict control that you can't just like jump in and drive it now. So it is right now. Today is January 19, 2016. That's stupid. The 2016 sporting regulations are in effect. And if you're driving a 2012, 13 or 14 Formula One car, it must be under these specifications. And one other rule, TPC may only be carried out with cars built to the specifications of the period mm. and only tires manufactured specifically for this purpose may be used. So they have to prove all that at oh, the will of the FIA. Shit. Yeah. Any, any, and oh and any God. cars under those three years must have permission to be sold or lent or used by anyone else to anyone else for any purpose. So those cars are under the control of the FIA. If you want to make a car, it's they it's under their whim of rules for the next four or five years. Yeah, but you Anything still can. That, they can drive. If it. if they there is it. if there is a bit of aero rules uh, that is similar enough from 2014 till na- till 2016, right. uh, and there will be, there are some things that, ca- that 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 you can develop around, like especially 15 and 16 are very close. Yeah. I bet even fourteen. Look, with uh, fourteen was the, the beginning yeah, of uh, a small of the of the evolution. of the engine, right? Yeah, yeah. Of, of 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 the new engine. So you you can have like you won't do like massive like testing of like super huge parts, but if you have a part that you can that you would engineer the same way in twenty fourteen and tw- as twenty sixteen, you tr- you'd be able to test it. That's a no problem. That's all you want. Mm. Which is kind of what they're gonna try to get away with doing. Or if you can stick it on a twenty eleven car this year. Right. You can drive that as much as you want. Right. Yeah. 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 And with whomever you want. Because the wind tunnel testing, as we know, is very specific. There's times, as and the CFD is very restricted. The uh, supercomputer. Yes. Fluid dynamic testing. Is um, also very restricted. Uh, that that is definitely something that Ferrari is definitely they're they're always that doing. Whole, though. That whole thing yeah. has actually made me kind of upset about what? the sport. <laughs> this, this no racing or driving in the off season oh man Unless, there is there is there is i understand i mean but that's pretty fu- it's like it's like uh if players couldn't train in the off season in hockey or any other sport it's like hey uh by the way during the off season you're not allowed to skate uh or practice kind of at all. Uh, motorsport ever. is is uh, I know weird like that. I know it's different. I know no, no, it's no. A... The, they're weird like that. But for sure, before like back in the day, what used to happen all the fucking time, I imagine. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, yeah. What, what used to happen is that F one wasn't. I mean, F one definitely was still the pinnacle of motorsports, but <laughs> it wasn't the only thing that most or at least the biggest F one teams were involved in in terms right. of racing. Like they. Right. So uh, Ferrari, for example, 
would be very involved in uh, uh, the Mila Milia, uh, like a really, really tough Italian race, mm-hmm. uh, or or the Targa Florio. They bring a few cars there with like their racing. With like it was it was the, the same, same sort of crew. it was the same Scuderia Ferrari right. that went out. It could have been like they could have brought like you know uh, mechanics that were maybe more um skillful with like the, the specific kind of car but they mm-hmm. it, it, some people did go to to, to both things or right. uh, and you know and and, and that's that's the, and, and those big other events happened during the off season sort of right. uh, or whenever the F1 calendar wasn't going on okay um since then uh there has been a decline in popularity for many 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 things many 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 reasons of those like side races they're not like they, right. they don't have the prestige the only one that still kind of do- i mean well very very much still does uh is the le mans 24 hour race right right but le mans that, that's i just watched a documentary on netflix about nice. it oh, yeah. nice yeah do you like it yeah it was cool it was really interesting it was kind of it's a different mil- kind of motorsport right yeah absolutely yeah so it had it, it hit all the points that it needed to for a documentary sort of <laughs> um yeah but it was interesting yeah totally different thing and oh, yeah, the, the, the challenge creature. is completely different for yeah, sure. yeah endurance racing is is, is intense in yeah. its own in its own mm-hmm. right <laughs> a lot more pee in your pants yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, just since you brought it up uh and uh i wasn't going to touch on this but if you continue to article 10.3 of the 2016 sporting regulations there's thc I like the abbreviation. <laughs> uh, the FIA defines it as the testing of historic cars shall be defined as any track running time, not part of an event, same wording as above, in which a competitor entered in the championship participates or in which a third party participates on behalf of a competitor using cars which are designed and built in order to comply with the 2011 Formula One tech, tech regulations or earlier. Okay. So THC may only be carried out with cars built to the spec of the era and provided it's only run on tires manufactured specifically for the purpose tires of the period may be used so basically any car 2011 or before you can drive it all day anywhere you want any track oh, cool. any as long as you want but they, they do say like use this, use the right type of tires <clears throat> right uh. <laughs> um they, so like, uh, let's go back let's watch let's watch this thing because we can we can we can put it on this yeah this let's, Red let's, Bull cl- let's close out with this is a little this is a testing of historic car day Max Verstappen actually, on Australia's kids boo hell ski yeah, go, slopes. Go, go up, I think it's like into the, th- the third minute you actually see him like go out and tear it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah there's apparently some famous ski slopes don't, in, don't, up don't in the Alps. Don't go full, full screen, but look at how cool this is. Yeah, Max Verstappen. They threw some full wet tires with chains on them. Yeah. And lifted this car on this the on ski the screen, right? lift. They they removed one of the chairs, attached some ropes. Interesting, this like car we pointed up out on the ski lift. Yeah, I know, like man. This is insane. This is it's it's a, it's a it's a RB11 though, right? Isn't it? This or or e- I forget which one. Yeah, oh, I think look so. at that. Turn up the turn up the noise. We can we can, can hear can this. You, can you? I think we can hear this legally. Look at those chains on the tires. Yeah. Just just keep commentating on this. Yeah, love it. Anyone that's watching, you're gonna get to see it. Or you, oh, can, man. you can look this up. Yeah, and well, we'll, we'll definitely put this in the links. But look at how fantastic this looks. Just an F1. We have been. There's a few this. short clips where where he's look at, he's driving on a cliff. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he, if if he does like if he fucks up, he could fuck up like with large okay. and end up all the way down. I would look at that. There's a little fence there, but that fence is meant to stop like 150 yes. pound person. Yeah. Like 150, 200 pound human being. Yeah. No. This would have been amazing to go to. I had the privilege of over New Year's going to Mont Tremblant, Montreal, and skiing a real mountain. And there's a few spots where you're kind of close to some cliffs, but yeah. I wasn't going like 200 kilometers an hour in a Formula One car. That's insane. You yeah. control yourself with that your seems two feet. Really it's, dangerous. It is. Yeah, when you're snowboarding near a cliff, it's kind of <laughs> like walking. You just stay away from the edge and you pay attention to your surroundings. You're not gonna get hurt. But now, God damn, that was cool. There's a. Uh, it doesn't matter. No, There's no, an onboard video to anyone that wants to look it up. You can oh. see an onboard. Now that was better. I don't know if you remember, but like we we had touched on the idea of like, hey, like what about a Grand Prix, a fall Grand Prix in, in snow, the man. in the motherfucking snow? And he even said in Sweden. Turns out, okay, so you know, remember how? Yeah, I know, right? Ah, <laughs> yes. Sick. Yeah. Turns out that uh, okay, so racing has been illegal in Sweden. Right, but for about fifty-five years, as we discussed last week. Before you know, like we we, we talked about the origins of F one, how like F one started as like 
the collection of the independent Grand European Prix. European big races. Yeah, the big, the the big race big of, prize of, each country. of each country. So uh, f- for the year 1933, the big prize of Sweden fucking was a snow race with with like what was grump what were grand prix it was cars. a real grand, grand prix it was the grand the prix snow? of sweden of 1933 was in the snow it, like just just go like go a bit a bit into this this is amazing yeah like this is yeah we, we can show <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, the, that's okay. like the, the old equivalent no, of no, no, go back, go back to like, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, look at this! What? <laughs> look at this! Oh, sorry, guys. Like look at the faller. Okay, like, okay. See, see, see if you can. There, there's a start. Look at that clock falling over. Yeah. That was the the old. Get out of the way! Want to get the fuck out of the way! Yeah. Look at these look like like covered wagons. But those, they're like converted. Alfa Romeo. These are converted horse carriages. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can. Anyone uh, curious? As every week, you can check flatofview.com or below this video. On YouTube for the links, it's called Grand Prix Raymond Lopet 1933. Yeah, you'll find the video, it's in black and white. This is oh my this god, is fucking bad. Yeah. Look at that. they even yeah. had like a basically a crane there with the camera. You see that? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's been going it. since 33. Yeah, and now they have like the scissor lift type thing. They're a little more <laughs> liberal. But look, look at, they're taking the corner pretty fast, man. Even even for yeah. like, like, like these cars are not Shady going slow through the snow. Yeah, no. <laughs> the two man, <laughs> the two man teams driving the car. Yeah, that that was of acceptable back then. Yeah, uh, you got a navigator, you got to adjust the steam and oil pressure, opening and closing valves, <laughs> pull, pulling levers, <laughs> <laughs> releasing <laughs> steam. I do this, you break. <laughs> what some giant. I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna need you to lean. lean. Big hats were in style in 1933. Yeah, right. The look, look, <laughs> yo, break, 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 break. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a very wide I think if you, if you go like even for Are those ahead. chain tires? Yeah, that's some big studded rubber, man. There's some studded rubber tires. Like, just through some of this, they're genuinely going fast. Check that out, yeah, seven minutes. <laughs> anyway, it, it, it looks super cool. And. Look, yeah, they did have chains. You're right. Yeah, some. I think that other team. I don't think the other team did. I think he just had studded tires. He's got chains on his back on his drive wheels. <laughs> this is awesome, isn't wow. it? Shouldn't I'm they just glad you found this. Yeah. I didn't even think to Google it because I didn't know. Was it? Look, he's heating up some soup oh, or something. Th- this is. Oh yeah, for he's sure. Got, he's got heating up lunch. <laughs> Definitely. Oh, hot oh, side oh, credit to this. Uh, <laughs> actually, like credit to where credit is due. Uh, to um, this like was hot on thing. Joe Sayward's uh, Twitter. You mm-hmm. listening, Joe? You listening, Joe? Did you hear us last week? Yeah. You find the split press. <laughs> <laughs> that was badass. It is cool. Yeah, check check out the link. It's it's only eleven minutes, but like just to see that, and honestly, if it was doable back then, it would be doable today. It oh, definitely. It is, but there's absolutely so we much just bullshit involved. <laughs> just ever step and drive famous ski hill in the Alps. That's badass. An older car can be done. Yeah. Anyway, I think that's uh the cap for testing in Pirelli this week. Obviously, we'll come back with the updates next week. And we'll move on to the next topic. Yeah. Mm. Trouble this week. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, there was a link, which I seem to have lost, but it doesn't really matter, from Bloomberg News. where it, like They've been on like TV, TV business news. Okay, yeah. For the biggest time, I think, in... It's been uh, 27, no, sorry, 17 years, not 27, 17 years. Mm-hmm. They had the biggest stock plunge ever. <laughs> this was, I believe, Friday, five days ago. Oh, you, got, you got your kitty. Oh, you got kitty, the kitty's in here. Uh, it came out. So, okay. Uh, sorry, this, this is kind of a, wrapping itself around. Volkswagen a few months ago had a few rumors that them or their brand Audi might enter Formula One. And then, then, then almost had- simultaneously, it came out in the news. Yes. As you were about to say. Yeah. No, no, it's that... that uh, <laughs> the diesel the whole scandal. scandal. The, whole the scandal. diesel scandal. They, they basically programmed their con- electronic control units for their engines in their customer cars, not their F1 cars, like your Jettas and your Passats. They, can, they programmed the computer to say that the emissions were way cleaner than they actually were because everyone knows diesel is super dirty. <laughs> yeah, dirty diesel. Especially in certain countries where they don't have 
<laughs> certain technologies available to pull out the sulfur and whatnot from this type of gas. Yeah. So Renault, five days ago, has been embroiled in or pulled, I guess, under investigation, the weight of the investigation on Volkswagen into the same situation. They're being investigated. Uh, their stock dropped almost 20% instantaneously when this news came out jesus christ it recovered about 10 percent. if you actually google the rental stock it's not as down as it seems like it might be but it's down but there's they're under investigation and they're denying any wrongdoing and from what i understand the fix if there is anything to fix mm -hmm. is not as as ridiculous volkswagen obviously is a bigger any americans listening would know volkswagen is a much bigger name in your country than renault might be renault is tied up with nissan mm. who apparently sells one suv in the united states that runs on diesel technology so there's not really any potential for the u.s government to go after renault and make their life hell for like the next half decade and cost them hundreds of millions of dollars but Renault just per completed a purchase ta slash takeover of Lotus Formula One. That's how it, it disconnects. So the thing yeah, is that exactly. they they are now in a pickle because if they have to like go undergo any any investigation and and get a, and get a hit on their um, on their stock ticker, that's gonna that's not gonna be good news. That's not gonna be that's gonna mean that the money that they thought that they probably could spend very freely on Formula One. Is not going to be the same amount of money they're going to actually have available because now they have all these other legal commitments on top of that. Recalling cars cost a lot of money, man. I like a lot of money. Right. Even as none of this is official, but I've seen hinted, obviously, we're talking about the internet here. Yeah. I've seen hinted that if there is, in quotations, any problem with these Renault engines that somehow, unlike Volkswagen, that they could be corrected much easier with the ECU. Oh, yeah? So perhaps, like, uh, I don't know. Ba basically, the, the, sc the scandal with Volkswagen, and I guess we can half assume Renault has the same type of scandal, is that the engine runs in a certain mode when you're mm -hmm. driving it around to the grocery store and the bank and going to work. And then when the computer detects that it's about to be tested... Mm and there's a computer plugged into its port, it realizes this and goes into, falls back into a default lower power mode that releases less emissions, has a better fuel mixture, better timing. But that's not the right, like that's, not, that's not what it's running at all times. <laughs> exactly, but as soon as you unplug that testing sensor, this testing connector from the computer, yeah. any, any car, like anyone that's listening, if you own a car or your family owns a car, a friend owns a car, if you're a passenger, just reach your hand underneath the glove box and there's gonna you'll find a connector there. there every car has a connector for the engine computer and then from the time you unplug that computer you say hey it passed the test you back out of the garage and go home your car goes back to its full power mode <laughs> spewing all kinds of shit and making your drive fun right you got more power under right. your foot oh my god <laughs> <laughs> so apparently if Renault has done something similar it's a much simpler software fix to maybe just lower the output of the engine at all times and comply how how was this caught like how did they catch this on this was on the wake this, of that big one right they, this they, is right, exactly one. on the wake of the Volkswagen right, okay, the, the EU emissions commission whatever it is especially a few months ago two months ago about there was a big me international meeting of world governments in france to agree on yeah. uh reducing emissions like we're fucking up the planet type of yeah. thing let's stop burning shit <laughs> uh please yeah so renault renault's got please. investigated it's not going to be the end more companies will get investigated but renault's saying they're not really at fault but they're in a bit of trouble and kind of separately kind of attached to the same news story definitely relating to Renault is that last week everybody knows oil is the lowest price it's been in over a decade mm, yes. we're, we're getting into the 30s of dollars a barrel which is 50 gallons which is 200 liters right we've talked about this a few times over our podcast anyone that's listening you know Venezuela in South America 
which is the backer, which basically runs PDVSA, which is one of the largest oil companies in the world. State-owned by Venezuela. State-owned by Venezuela. Whom sponsors Pastor Maldonado, who was buddies with Hugo Chavez. Yes. Before he was possibly given cancer (laughs) and died. (laughs) Who... Whom yeah. drives for Lotus <laughs> today, which was now purchased and taken over by Renault. Oh my God! Who is in trouble for emission scandals for burning too much gas? Gives a lot of money to Renault for uh, in sponsorship to let this but, Venezuelan but it, but Pastor hey, Maldonado but, but, drive their car. But 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 their their funding is in question now, right? Correct. So. The price of oil, when, when PDVSA was committed to tens of millions of dollars behind Pastor Maldonado every year for whatever type of performance or lack of performance he <laughs> was able to put on for whomever team he was to, driving to for. Put a, to put a couple cars in the, in the, in into the, the barrier, walls, his yeah. own cars into the walls, his own head into the pavement, etc. <laughs> uh, Venezuela, who holds as far as the world knows the largest confirmed reserves of oil <laughs> of any country out of the like 200 countries in the world they have the most jesus um so when's the pipeline going in yeah they're they're, they're in big trouble <laughs> they're in well, big trouble so as as of a few days ago uh nicholas maduro who is the president of venezuela There were some federal elections and he didn't fare so well. And the economy in the last few months has dropped almost 5%, which is huge for an oil-based, oil-exporting-based economy. Yeah. Uh, They've declared a state of emergency. And there is a, I believe, 60-day freeze on national spending. So... So we're Whoa. completing the circle. Whoa. We're coming. We're coming all the way back around 360 degrees. On the 14th of January, yeah, Cyril Abitibou. I believe on the 15th, the state of emergency was announced. On the 14th, I believe Cyril Abitibou, who is the Renault ambassador, the is head, a Renault motorsport guy. The motorsport, the head of F1, the face of Renault in F1. Yeah, flew to Venezuela from France to go meet with the government <laughs> to confirm that. They're late payments. They've been expecting payments from PDVSA for Pastor Maldonado as sponsorship, as they've agreed to pay for the team. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're kind of a few months behind <laughs> on payments. <laughs> he went to go confirm that the money's coming. Uh, can we con- can we confirm the money's coming? Pastor Maldonado's going to drive for us, keep this car going with cash. If you look there, Kevin Magnuson... So let, let's show this to the people. Anyone that's watching, we got this Instagram video picture here from K Mag official on Instagram. His his uh, quote is: "There's always sh- sunshine behind the clouds." It's a photo out the window of a private jet. Looks like some sort of a Lear jet, looking at some clouds with the sun reflecting off the wing. Yeah, what is this? What's this here? Right? It's a reflection. Some sort. Looks like some so, sort of twin ion engine. <laughs> that's probably that's a tie fighter. Sorry, <laughs> I'm guessing that's probably the, the lens of his cell phone. Oh, that makes way more sense than my idea. This is a really big circle. So this this private jet apparently, <laughs> allegedly, yeah, by the rumors of the internet, is owned by a company called Best Seller, who is the largest clothes seller, the largest distributor of clothing and fashion. Okay. And Ke- behind Kevin's, Kevin Magnuson. Ah. So there, there's some rumors that K Mag, Kevin Magnuson is going to France to the Renault headquarters. Exactly. He he has been released. We talked about this about uh, three four podcasts ago. He he is released for, as the reserve driver from McLaren, mm. and let go as a free agent. Mm. There's always some sunshine behind the clouds, as he says. Oh oh. So the, the rumor is with this sponsored bestseller bestseller design clothing and one or two other sponsors from his home countries or around Europe have put together about seven million dollars in sponsorship behind him. Holy shit. And he is He, he was good he was alright man. Remember he, is, he got he got his car on his first year, his first race as a rookie in Formula yeah. One a couple years ago. He got his car all the way to third place. 
And you got to drive a little bit when Alonso was in a coma. Yeah. Back at the start of the year after the testing, right? Jesus. Cool. Right? I mean, not cool that he was in a coma, but cool that Kevin Magnussen. Yeah, I, th- I think I think if there's many more people that uh, don't deserve a driving Formula One like this guy does. Mm. It's it's my opinion. I mean, obvi- it, if you went on if we went at it on merit alone, uh, for sure, uh, Stoffel van Dorn would probably deserve a driving Formula One more than K Mag. Right. But Stoffel probably doesn't have uh, uh, the backing yet, and he's tied to McLaren. So mm. K Mag, go go for it, man. K-Mag. Yeah. So so j- just to just to uh, bring everything together, Nicholas Maduro, the president of Venezuela, mm. has declared a state of emergency. And a 60-day economic emergency in Venezuela, which is basically like a tightening down and freeze on government spending. Mm-hmm. PDVSA, the oil company of Venezuela. Owned by the government. Owned by the government, backed by them, controlled by them. is And the country of Venezuela is the largest holder of oil reserves in the world. Oil right now is at its lowest price in about a decade. Pastor Maldonado... It, and it's not and it's not looking like it's gonna be like it's gonna go up anytime soon because yeah, it's gonna be a all, few years yeah all of that is tied up with like the whole thing that's going on in the middle east with and syria this, and whatever this slump is bringing in a flood of renewable and green type energy energy economy projections that are all coming into play all kinds of companies are putting billions into electric cars yeah etc anyways pastor maldonado who is sponsored by PDVSA, who is backed by the government of Venezuela, who has the largest oil reserve in the world. His drivership with $15 million behind him is in question to Renault because, first of all, they had a meeting to decide whether or not their current sponsors are um, appropriate for Mm. their team. Right. Whether or not. And whether or not they're using KMAG as a catalyst for their... Negotiations with negotiations with Venezuela to yeah, say you know Venezuela. like hey man you don't sign this contract we got K Mag he's obviously a better driver than Maldonado listen what happens that he only those, has a fifth those of the contracts money, are, are, are of the money they've probably like have uh, a couple a couple money. things built into them whereby if one of the parties uh, doesn't fulfill their obligations over a set, a set amount of time, then the contract is considered to be breached and then they can like basically uh, consider the contract as broken. So if Pervesa hasn't paid for, uh, uh, you know, uh, when they were supposed to and their the, 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 the late payments are late enough, I'm sure right. that uh, that uh, Renault, or, well, the Lotus team, now Renault, has had, had a clause in there where they can just say, all right, we, don't, we have no responsibility to you now since you haven't been paying so this is what's up in the air. P- <clears throat> Sorry, Renault is deciding between maybe some late payments, some stutters in payments, and association with PDVSA, who has ties with Venezuela, which doesn't have the greatest wor- like world standing. Their, their, their future right now is dubious at best. <laughs> right. Or K-Mag, who is a promising young driver who trains hard, who has a small country entirely behind him and is holding seven million dollars in sponsorship here he is on a private jet owned by his sponsors so it would be an all young team Julian palmer and kevin magnuson i'd love to see that yeah i'd, I'd actually i think with a with a with a mercedes engine and uh new money even though the money may not necessarily be all there because of all the troubles that Renault is going to be in right now but um with money pouring in with with a with a solid campaign, I think I think a team of Julian Palmer and Kevin Magnussen is gonna be way more exciting than Julian Palmer and Paso Maldonado because if a team of with with Maldonado there, just the talk is always just gonna be look at how much better. Crashed <laughs> yeah, Maldonado. well yeah, little Maldonado, where is he crashed? You know, and it, with with, <laughs> with his foot up a barrier. Where's <laughs> where's Julian Palmer? Fighting for fifth, fighting for fourth. You know that's that that is a little bit less exciting than both saying both Renault guys are actually fighting. They're young guys. They're up there. They're like pulling some Verstappen like stunts. It's a better story. Yeah, it's definitely it, it's gonna and it's gonna it, it's gonna it's be exciting. It's gonna be like more interesting to watch because as much as a, a Maldonado crash like you know a crash of any kind is kind of like cool to see here and there. Yeah, 
it's it's like once you really get into the sport, it's not as exciting as seeing a close battle. Right. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Which is the whole battle, the whole political battle. <laughs> you want to see somebody kill it, dominate, have the best technology, or do you want to see all this? this is really all, you want to see a procession? Really interesting news. I mean, you know, who, 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 who says is, the, who says the, the F1 preseason is boring? Come on. <laughs> But we, we kind of started like this last year, right? Like, we right. had a ton to talk about last year. And I had, like, especially no idea what was going on. I was just like, yeah, no, that sounds really interesting. Cool. We did talk about the uh, the track zone. That was, that was fucking pretty cool. I'm we down should, with that. Yeah, we should do that again. Ooh. Track yeah, breakdown sure. episode. I yeah. like that. For sure. Um, anyways, I got, I got f- final final point here. Final point. Red Bull, who had been obviously fighting the whole year, trying to figure out what engine they're going to get, whose engine, when are we getting it, how are we going to fit it, when with the Renault, calling it a tag hire. Yeah. Uh, interestingly, they haven't announced any reveal dates. Maybe we'll talk about that next. A couple of teams have re- announced when they're going to reveal their cars for next year. Red Bull have not, but they've said that they are now ahead of schedule. They actually said they were well ahead of schedule. They've had felt pressure, etc. Work through Christmas, but they're well ahead of schedule Ooh, using the Renault engine. Oh, cool! So be interesting to see what happens. Red Bull versus Renault. Red Bull. That's gonna be interesting. For Red sure. Bull versus Renault. And uh, Renault. If you want to search, there's a few, few clues online. Like nothing official yet. They tweeted a picture of a yellow sock, and they tweeted a picture of a really close up of their old car. So I guess it's gonna be. Something similar to their old livery. Bright yellow, maybe a little bit of turquoise. Cool, cool, cool. Anyways, let's come back oh, to the next topic. Yeah, cool. I guess. All right, yeah, I guess we. Shaka shaka! Oh, is that it? Yeah, that's it. Oh my god. For this segment. We'll be back in a few minutes. In reveals. Let's talk about this next. So far, only three teams <laughs> out, of, out of what, nine? What is it, nine? Ten. <laughs> Tien. Uh, Haas, right? Haas, Haas. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so anyways, th- three teams so far have confirmed the dates of their reveals of their cars. McLaren, which will be the MP4 31, February 21st. Mm. First announcement, which is which is kind of interesting because they were the most behind Honda Honda yes. McLaren. They were having the most trouble last year. You yeah, I mean? they, they were not in a good spot. Yeah. Anyways. They they're talking they're talking about being pressured, getting caught up for time. <coughs> they were the first to announce the release of the <coughs> the release date of the car. And you know what's so funny? Like remember like <laughs> I, it's it's like um when Haas said that they were oh we have plenty of time now. Remember like that, that that's what we said last week that it came out that Haas said like, Oh, don't worry, we have plenty of time. Right, right. Then like basically like a week later now McLaren's like, Oh, we have plenty of time. Don't worry. It's like, Oh yeah, yeah, Haas, you think you're gonna beat us? You gonna you think you're gonna come to F one and beat us by saying like that mm-hmm. rhetoric and saying that like you barely had enough time to prepare and now you're gonna beat us? Which they probably will to be honest. I think <laughs> I think that Haas will do better than McLaren. I feel like that maybe. Yeah. I hope somebody that doesn't watch F1 eventually buys my car. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so they're, they're the first to announce. Interestingly, they made a big deal and posted a story, made a big news article about them. Honda working, McLaren, working through the Christmas break. Oh, my. Yeah. They had, they had the factory full time. I didn't even have a sip of my beer. Yeah, that's how you put that you down. Said. Yeah, that yeah. was insane. They had their, their full team sacrifice their Christmas break to get this car ready. But they happen to be the first team to announce their release date, which will be February 21st. First day, as we mentioned earlier today, the first day of preseason testing will be the 22nd. Now, McLaren are in huge trouble. They, they might, they might, Ron Dennis might scream, know, cry and scream all day and say that they don't have, that they have enough money, but <clears throat> they have like, okay, they have enough money in the sense that they can raise as or you know they, they can spend as much as the big guys are very close to be a top like you know uh, as much as a top team spends they, they have the money to do that this year but who knows how long they can like like if they do it this year and if they don't get like if they still don't get enough sponsors i mean you look at their uh at alonso and buttons racing suits and they barely have any sponsors on them right hmm. it's all mostly white um this is true but 
as uh, also just the the yeah. counterpoint as we as we mentioned earlier in in uh in this season of our show and as McLaren themselves have mentioned they, this is their best year ever for their production cars and they're actually expanding production moving forward with their vision of ex- one entirely new model of production car per year. Yeah, but remember how, how but, yeah, exactly. Ron we, Dennis Ron Dennis at the beginning of last year. We don't know their... Yeah, their, their internal the show, ra- we, 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 can, we, we can't be sure about that. We they're making. But re- remember how, okay, Ron Dennis at the beginning of, of last year, right around this time, right. he basically came out and said, oh, don't worry, by the third or fourth race of the year, we'll have a major title sponsor, and that never came. Yeah, that mm. never came. Mm. He did say <laughs> they're waiting for someone specific, something yeah. that reflects the values of the team, etc. Yeah, exactly. They're just looking for money. So who knows? Maybe they're become overconfident. Maybe they've, maybe they've delivered on what they thought they were going to deliver. I don't know. We'll see. We'll. we'll I, I honestly think. Well, I. I think the sport would be better off if McLaren wasn't at the very bottom. <laughs> of oh, the grid. absolutely! And and yeah, just to see the just just to have those two great guys. I mean, yeah. uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm not such a fan of Jensen Button, but I can see how he's like he's still a good driver. He's still one yeah, of absolutely. like one of the good drivers on the grid right now. He's he, he can control the shit out of a car, and he actually gave a loan so the a run for his money. But today is Jensen Button's birthday. Oh really? Oh hey, uh, happy, oh. Birthday, Jensen. happy birthday, JP. JP, JP. <laughs> what's up, boy? Um, but Alonso, like uh, Alonso January nineteenth, still will be remembered as one of one of the great um, fighters of the sport. One of no matter what you say about his Ever, only his sure. his two championships, but Alonso, if if he was within within a chance of a podium position, you could bet all your money that Alonso would make it count. Right. Right. So he, he and, and he was exciting to what he is still, I'm sure, but he, they just don't show him enough because he's all the way at the back and he's kind of lost the, the will to live. But, <laughs> but, um, but, it, but those two guys should be, you know, uh, both of them should be in a, in a higher position mm-hmm. fight, you know, fighting for meaningful points, not, not just to get into the points. So hopefully yeah, I do hope, I do hope that the, the McLaren does something with this year's car. And it is my feeling that they probably just stopped developing their 20, 20- 15 car very early on the same way that Ferrari did the year before we we talked about this before they they tried building the long thin turbo compressor that didn't work out you just can't they had a they sort of hit a wall above 120,000 RPM on the turbo compressor Mm -hmm. which they thought they really needed what they were hoping they could achieve was 200,000 with the long thin compressor as opposed to a shorter fighter so say, say, before we move on with the re- reveals, the, hun- the Honda sort of confirmed engine overhauls for the year is that they've they've said they're keeping with their size zero concept. Right. Their chassis and aero and bodywork is not going to change a lot, but that they absolutely admitted that the turbo was a mistake. They need a larger turbo. They worked over Christmas to get the car together. And they expect to be competitive this year. So we'll see. They've, they've also locked probably the best day to launch a car, which is the day before first testing, February <laughs> 21st. No other team's going to want to compete. That's a, that is a Thursday. Unless they don't care. Like, yeah, unless they don't ha- care. Haas is probably going to release a car the same day, but just because they don't care. Mm. Yeah, they're one of the lower class teams. People will be watching the McLaren reveal anyways. Second team to reveal their release launch date. Is Williams the FW38 called an evolution, not a revolution? That's important. Mm. Correct. This is launch said by Mo- Rob Smedley, February 22nd, first day of preseason testing. They will reveal and launch the car, and basically an evolution. But a lot of aerodynamics have been changed and overhauled. Uh, Rob Smedley admitted and emphasized that. The weaknesses of their car last year was in the slower tracks and wet weather, which is when the car is moving slow. Their aerodynamics were kind of tuned towards yeah, the, the, a the, high the, speed. The rear end of that car was all over the show. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. And, and, you know, Bottas was taken out twice Yeah, <laughs> by Ferrari. But basically, that they've focused. They've 
concentrated their effort on developing and improving the wet weather and slow perform slow performance of the carts it's sort of even out their performance that they've promised sort of to in in quotations to their followers you know we're not going to have any bogey tracks this year we can't say that singapore we're going to lose mm-hmm. because it's a slow track if it rains we're fucked okay. they're not saying that that's cool i mean if one of the things that uh, that um pat simmons there uh, Chief Technical Director right. uh, said uh, in in a recent podcast. I like that guy. He's very down yeah. to earth. Yeah, he's, he's very he's like pretty direct. He seems yeah. like he's very like your grandfather type of guy. Yeah, <laughs> like he's gonna teach you something like, like, about yeah, life. Yeah, like a cool grandfather. Yeah, yeah, he's not sure. gonna bullshit you about what's real. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's he, real. He 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 basically said that. Listen, we tried a couple things <laughs> that were that could be cons- could have been considered revolutionary. revolutionary. And it just yeah. didn't work. He said, yeah, he, he, he yeah. flat out went and said, like, it just didn't work. It just didn't work. Yeah, so <laughs> we're oh sticking God. to an evolution of the concept. Good for them. Continuing with this topic we're on right now, the Mercedes engine, Mercedes team, have mm-hmm. been arguably probably the most secretive of their engine uh, changes, and we don't have any information right now. <laughs> Finally, Sauber. Sauber. For, Ferrari's probably not gonna like really come out. I, I mean, they the came out with is, a stupid thing. The thing is, Ferrari has had the most leaks of their engine changes. Mercedes, <laughs> Mercedes has been being the most secretive and kept their shit uh-huh. down. There's been nothing released about them. Okay. Re- Renault also, but people kind of they've been secretive in as far as the press, but mm. as far as last year, a few leaks and because of this. Renault Red Bull thing there's yeah. been some inferences that I think are pretty correct we've sort of beaten them to death but le, le, the Renault who knows you know yeah anyways Sauber okay the, the third team to announce their unveiling it's gonna be for the, the C35 the test, right exactly which is unfortunate for them they're gonna be I assume still participating in the first test the with, first with an old test, car with, yeah, with last, year's, with car. last year's car yeah Hopefully they can squeeze some of the new electronics or sensors or aero parts oh, the, or wings on there. But at that at that end of the grid, well, you know, in, March first in, in, in the in the middle of the grid, like the, like that, like especially a team like Sauber with such a restricted budget, right? They really, really, really have to pick and choose where they spend their money. Really, like they probably well, the most restricted budget. Yeah, yeah. The next topic for, we want to come sure. back, we're going to come back with is well, I'm manners saying, oh, oh, overhaul. All I'm, all I'm saying is that like I think manners going to destroy them this year. If like if if a team like Sauber decides to come to a testing it's not going to be for no reason. They're going right. to have to they're going to have something to test. We'll just it's not going to be like a full car. It's not going to be the same as as a Ferrari for sure now. So, if you want to anyone listening, if you want to continue to our odd bits segment that we're going to continue with Sauber is getting sued hard. But we'll, we'll come back to that. <laughs> the C35, anyways, will be unveiled March 1st. So let's move. Anyways, we to, just to conclude, Honda is keeping their size zero. Mm-hmm. They've admitted and agreed to the public that our turbo was too small. It's going to be bigger, but we're keeping with the size zero. Nice. Mercedes has been fairly secretive. Renault, if you want to go back to our previous video, we just dissected everything we know about them. Let's look at Ferrari, though. Let's pull up this picture first. This one? No, the previous one. So <clears throat> this comes from somehow, and f- strangely, the Ferrari have been or had the most leaks. This is uh, this graphic is from Auto Spore. Auto Sprint. Auto, sorry, Auto, Auto Sprint. Sorry, mm. I'm missing it. The last uh, rip off. The last few letters. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? So if you look on on the right side is the layout of their 2015 engine people are watching and people on that are watching the left side you're looking at the layout of the 2016 engine so on the right ferrari never had any thermal issues as far as we know that was never no made that a was big the whole thing of. yeah so the light the light yellow between the turbo compressor and on the on the right side yeah the 2015 engine yeah, yeah there Right between Got the it. turbine and the compressor, we have the MGUH, which used to be situated there, which would be basically a heavy copper wound magnet that would be regenerating power from heat. Wait, wait. Or, or whatever it is that they had, you know, something yeah, like whatever, that. Right. Some, some sort of heat generating power. Sat there, the darker yellow below 
was the MGUK. Sorry, this is was the copper wound magnet that was taking energy from kinetic power of the car right. during decelerations and converting it back into electrical energy, which was being saved in the battery. The and blue... Yeah, and, and and what you said before that the part that was stuck in between the compressor uh, and the turbine, the turbine, yeah, was actually the MGUH. The MGUH, yes. Yeah. Hmm. The, anyway, the heat, the heat pulling, electrical generating component. Oh. That blue square was the intercooler, which used to be sat between the V, which is where Honda has their turbine side, mm. their turbine compressor. So now, if you move to the left. That blue square, that giant blue square, the intercooler. It's going to be at the side of the, of the engine. If this info is to be believed, will be below and in front of the engine. The left side of the engine is the front where the driver sits. Right. Be below and in front of the engine, taking cooling air from the one of the side pods instead of the overhead pod. Oh, shit. Which moves a lot of the weight of the car lower and forward okay. to the center of the car. Which, the, is, which is good for stability. Exactly. And for oversteer, you're right. balancing the car, having less understeer. Whereas you see, the MGUH and MGUK used to hang out behind the engine as yes. a, before last year. Now right? they're incorporated inside. Now they're incorporated inside the engine. Oh, no, 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 no. No, no, no. Look. Well, look, look, look. What? what the fuck was We're that? Fine. Sorry. Okay. So, no, no. Actually, this what it, what, what it's what it, no what it says in Italian is that it's gonna have the intercooler is gonna be on let's say let's Below say on, and the, in on, front. The, on the left of the car, on the left side of the car, and then the other one like this yell this the the what is this again the MGUK That's the MGUK is gonna be on the right, right to balance the weight that yellow square the MGUK oh. which used to be centered on the back of the engine yeah which is basically it's running off the drive shaft it used to probably okay. run on. On the right side, 2015 was probably running directly off the center shaft right. of the engine. Right. Now it's been moved to the right side. Basically, imagine the driver is facing to your left, looking at this photo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Over your right shoulder would be the MGUK, which be, would be geared transversely from the transmission there. And ab absorbing the same power this as it was. This is kind of a big change. Man. It's a huge change. Yeah. And taking the MGUH, which was taking the heat energy, which was released by the turbocharger and compressor of the turbo system, has now been put between the V. Dentro la V del motro. Yeah, that's that, that, that that's that's uh, the right. The unlike heater. unlike Mercedes, they haven't taken the giant step of splitting the compressor and the well, turbo they, they clearly feel the like turbine. this is gonna give him more right right well at least for this year who knows next year next year they're still open to move it mercedes still has their compressor and the turbo the turbine one on the front and one on the back of the engine driven by a shaft through the v so who knows Han ferrari might run into some heat problems but i'm sure I'm sure they've tested this. Yeah. And if you change graphics, change graphics here. What this all means is the tighter rear. This this graphic comes <coughs> from Sky, it looks. This comes from Auto Sprint. Oh, okay. Auto Sprint is the source. Uh, I can't read that Twitter name, unfortunately. Whoever tweeted this, man, I'm sorry. Oh, no, we I got the engine graphics on the right. Can you, can you like, if you're up? watching, anyways. All of this leads to the compressor know, and the knows. turbine being closer together and less weight being behind the motor, which okay. allows a tighter rear engine cover, this. <clears throat> which can slope steeper, allow more air over the car and okay. under the rear wing, a shorter nose, which has been homologated. Right. This has been crash tested. This is separate from the engine. Ferrari's front nose. It's going to be more of like the, the traditional 2015 nose that we saw in many teams. Right. Actually, most of most of the teams had a shorter nose homologated than Ferrari had with yes. stronger crash crash testing. Oh, crazy. Yeah, most, team, most teams were ahead. Toro Rosso the, style, they say. They call it. <laughs> right. William, Williams as well. They, yeah. Towards the end, of, halfway through the year, they switched to that short nose. Yeah. The rear suspension of the Ferrari has been changed to a pole rod, which is... Uh, Probably at a different angle, according to these guesses, because of the relocation of the you radiators. Mean, you mean the, the front suspension? 
Oh, the, rear suspension is pull rod, and the front is a push rod instead of the pull rod from last year. Okay. Right, right. So the rear has been a pull rod with a different geometry because last year the intercooler for the turbo was a giant one placed in between the V that was sucking air from above, above the driver's head. Oh, shit. Whereas now this year's engine is a smaller intercooler, flatter, which is sucking air from one of the two side pods and totally changing the aerodynamics of the car and the dynamics oh, totally. of the aero capability. That's crazy. That's If that works this and if they a, actually did a pretty good job with this. It's a huge overhaul. Holy every crap. team was given 32 tokens this year. So and the front suspension. This, 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 could, this could p- 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 potentially mean that like if Ferraris, this is a big gamble. If they, yes. they, they're, they're definitely, they, moved they, went, in, they went into this knowing, like they must have, he must have known, Marciano must have approved this, such an overhaul, right. knowing that they were going to like stick to like similar engine uh, specs for for years to come. Because otherwise you, you wouldn't even try this. That intercooler has got to be fairly to extremely light. I would assume it's not water or alcohol. It's mm-hmm. probably some sort of glycol. But the MGUH and the MGUK are fairly, probably some of the heavier components of the engine. The MGUK is being moved forward maybe almost half a meter or more. And the MGUH, even more than that, (laughs) especially the way. And the new front suspension, the top will use a push rod, which was not used before. And the bottom will be about the same as it was last year. But the top will use a push rod to incorporate the shorter nose. But this is the overhaul brought into Ferrari, which they think will, is a lot closer to what Mercedes is running, actually. That's crazy. That's pretty cool. All right. I'm looking forward to see how they do on the track and the testing. It is pretty crazy. Renault, Renault, unfortunately, a lot of the news has been diverted to the shit we were talking about in the last clip. And Mercedes somehow has flown un- under the radar. They've hidden a lot of this. But... We'll talk about Manor next, who just incorporated a brand new Mercedes motor. Alrighty. We're taking some of those uh, new innovations, some new people. All right, let's let's uh, yeah, we'll be back in a minute. We'll be back in a minute with the Manor news. Can we good? As soon as we're ready. I think we're ready right now. We live. Yeah. Live again. We we're are back. live again. Okay, we'll keep this keep this down. Okay, so Manor. The huge reshuffling. Yeah, rolling off of the last. They have not announced their um, release date or whatever the car, but they have tweeted. If you if you go through those links, I uh, one of those links is is um, about Manor. They have been homologated. There we go. I'm on the ball today, boys. You're on the ball. January fifteenth, our in our installment today. We have completed our final crash test. So now we have a fully homologated chassis. Next stop test one in Barcelona. What a change from last year. Yeah, Manor, <laughs> Manor is ready. What a change from a few months ago. Check this out. Uh, John Booth and Graham Loden. We did a big piece on this about well, a month we'll, or so ago. Missed. Yeah. Well, this is kind of a slap in the face to them because they both said, this team sucks. It's kind of ruining my legacy. My career is getting <laughs> squashed down. This sucks for my future. I quit, right? Well, they did, they just had some disagreements with the new management. Yeah, well, all, oh, yeah. I'm sure there was some of that in there. Bring up, can you bring up Nicholas Tombazis? T O M B A Z I S. I believe the British people will call it Tombazis. Tombazis, yes. Oh wait, is it not uh, Tombaxis? Oh right. Yeah, yeah. So, Manor is ready to go. They have announced, hired made public Nicholas Tombasis as their aero chief going forward, which is interesting. He worked for Benetton, McLaren, and Ferrari for the last 23 years. He's a guy, he's a guy with, um, with experience, yeah. He's Look a badass. Him. There he is right there, leaning over the Ferrari into well, the cockpit. Felipe Massa. Felipe Massa. <laughs> he's actually been Ferrari's chief design engineer for the past nine years. Hmm. Now he works for Marusha. Marusha has pulled him in. They've they've locked him down. He works for them now. Nice. They've got the Mercedes engine going forward. Okay. So a lot a lot of uh, a lot of bright lights ahead of them. You know what I mean? Mercedes power. They've got a Williams gearbox for this year, which has proved itself. 
Right. Williams didn't have any problems that we know of with their gear bo- gearbox last year. No, not really. And also a tech partnership with Mercedes going forward. Or right. Sorry, with, sorry, not with Mercedes, with Williams. Right, with for, the, Williams. For, the, for the whole drive uh, shaft or whatever. Yeah, for the whole, the full drive train and yeah. any info gained off of that transmission. Uh, that's basically it. But and and then yeah the, and their partnership with Mercedes that it's right. not we to be understated. We don't have a date yet for their unveiling. I'm sure they're gonna have some sort of exciting livery that they've put together, and uh, that's it. Uh, cool. Yeah. Right. Manner kick ass. Let's do it. Bring it up. Bring it up. Beat Sauber if they can beat Sauber this year. That would be some fucking big news, right? Yeah, though. The, I th- I think I think they will, uh, and I think they're going to be a midfielder to definitely watch. Um, them versus st- them, Sauber and Haas together it might be a interesting race. We still we still have to like this for the first find weeks. out exactly like who they're who they're going to put in their cars, and you know I'm sure that that might change from week to week. But uh, yeah, it could change through the, throughout the year. Uh, uh, lots of interesting Rossi. stuff for for Manor, and uh, like really wish him all the best. You know that that team. Uh, the fact that they yeah, survived absolutely. 2015, the best. <laughs> that, 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 that meant that they had, they went through some tough times and they're on the up and up and, you know, yeah, like exactly like you said, good luck to them. Yeah. The man, they out survived Caterham and HRT in Spania. They, they did it, man. Yeah. They've gone through a bunch of owners. They've gone through a bunch of principals and well, last year, man, around this time we were reporting about how their shit was being auctioned off. Remember? Yeah. There yeah. was a riot at the factory and yeah. they almost sold everything. Yeah, no, what 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 a turnaround! It's good, good for them. Anyways, we'll be right back. The final segment of the week. We're gonna do some odds and ends, some bullshit stories about Lewis Hamilton, some tigers, odd bits. <laughs> Thanks for listening. What what what? We're good. We're live. Yeah, on the internet, forever. Yeah. Okay. What? Silly bits. Yeah, we are. Odd bits. So wait, wait, did you like yeah, stop it? Small it stories. Started. We stopped. We okay. started. We're okay. back. This is the first time we're doing this. Let's start with something serious. Sauber, we were just talking about. Uh, one of, Obviously, one of the lower-end teams. Obviously, had some trouble, as we talked about about a year ago, getting sued by Van der Gaard. Van der yeah. Apparently, Adrian Suto has just had in the past two days uh deemed admissible by the court of his home country of switzerland that a lawsuit worth 3.5 million swiss francs which is equivalent to about 3.5 million us dollars almost the same couldn't go forward because uh, Sauber told him to go fuck himself at the end of last year. <laughs> basically, the, basically the same story. Well, he was he, he was he was basically trying to do the same thing that uh, that uh, van der Garde was <laughs> this time last year. <laughs> yeah, he basically tried the same thing. He came forward. We did, we ran a story earlier today about Kevin Magnussen possibly overtaking Pastor Maldonado's fifty million dollar seat with his seven million dollar sponsorship. Adrian Suto, who came to uh, Sauber, said that he had forty million behind him. So, basically, this this lawsuit has been given the green light to go ahead, him to hire lawyers, put his case together, and file suit, and win money. Uh, Sauber has come forward saying that basically, Suto had acquired penalties in Formula One. Okay. which negated his some of his driving skill at least he had poor performance he had no 40 million dollars that he <laughs> promised he had been in certain um press conferences and media days critical of the team and finally this is what i find the most hilarious yeah had stalled the car more than one time <laughs> he stalled the car Jeez. So we will definitely be following this going forward. But his lawsuit has been given the green light that he has enough evidence to challenge for three and a half million dollars for a cancel contract by the Sauber F1 team mm-hmm. to hire Adrian Sutil 
for last year for 2015. So the, this this would have been so the, the the body that wouldn't have recognized that would be would have been the contract rec- recognition board, which is kind of all part of like the, the the system that F1 has to like settle any like contracts in between drivers and the teams. Right. Ba- basically, Adrian Sutil is alleging that he had a signed contract with Sauber and they neglected to fulfill their end of it. The, for for yeah. last for last year 2015 yeah. yeah right right yeah it's the same yeah his his lawsuit's coming late but it's <laughs> more or less the same as Van der Gard except it's, with, except it's not gonna work at all well we'll see but yeah I doubt it mm-hmm. separately before we move on to some bullshit Pope Francis <laughs> he attended a some sort of a road safety event aimed at. I don't know, lowering the number of kids that got run over by cars and people get run over by cars and stuff. He held a public international prayer on Thursday, last Thursday. Okay. Praying for the life of Michael Schumacher. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hashtag keep fighting, Michael. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Have Are faith. They? Seriously, one second of silence. <laughs> Just one second, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd like to see him come seriously, back. Get no, back yeah, see, yeah, see, yeah, seriously, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, for real. Lewis Hamilton, you got some of those links ready? Yep. We got or let, 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 okay, hold on. Since you got this up, let's let's talk about this first. Channel four, channel four. We'll get oh, to yeah. the we'll get to the bullshit before the semi real news. <laughs> channel four, we talked about this before. Whisper films owned by DC. DC, David Coulthard and one or two other dudes. They've been retained by Channel Four to broadcast the coverage of 2016 formula one season oh, on shit. channel four in britain which has been taken over from the bbc who sold their rights because they don't have enough money they've announced the 10 races they will be showing live which are bahrain spain azerbaijan the uni- international <laughs> european grand prix actually can, can, can i just like say something real quick like just an, an aside to a, yes to, to, to the podcast and to f1 please um because i know that we have some british viewers and british listeners out there british people they are gutting they are gutting your public institutions right now you need to fight for the nhs you need to fight for the bbc what what the, the people that are wrong about this whether you're f1 not, fans or not this yeah. is a small part i'm 50 percent british my mom was born in your country she lived there <laughs> there, there she was nine left and went something back really crazy going her late on teens because she didn't even like it outside of britain they want to turn I'm british they want they want to turn britain into like some sort of pseudo america don't let it happen like look what's going on over there right now do not Seriously. they are playing the great britain grand prix and the testing that follows after it, Tuesday and Wednesday, or Wednesday and Thursday, or whatever days, back to back with Hungary, which is actually two weeks later, those two races. Yeah. Skipping Germany, showing Belgium and Italy back to back, also one week apart. Skipping a week, showing Malaysia, skipping a month, back to Mexico, and finishing the season with Abu Dhabi. For, they've announced, David Coulthard will be announcing each race they will be um bahrain will his, be the his first team is yet to be confirmed and now remember that this is was <laughs> david coulthard was in talks with the, the new incarnation of the bbc top gear to, to potentially be a presenter but i guess he's yeah. no longer he's he's doing this instead he's we'll declined. Go for him he's declined he likes this better but they will not be displaying or showing the australia race mm-hmm. part oh. part or the canada race part of the uh, five eyes uh, Part of the goddamn Commonwealth, <laughs> the base of the Commonwealth. None of that, but it's probably because it's not convenient. Like it's it's not a it's not they're not played at convenient times for the British crowds. Yeah, they're not. But the Channel Four has also announced that most likely, for the BBC fans, the Eddie Jordan fans, mm-hmm. he will be utilized in some way for the live broadcasts. <laughs> in some way. But keep in mind for the other races. They will not be broadcast live. Australia, China, Russia, Monaco, Canada, Australia, Germany, Singapore, Japan, the United States, and Brazil. They will be doing some sort of highlight episodes and news, etc. Some sort, some sort of whisper films 
treatment to the races. We'll we'll, we'll see. Uh, well, we'll I'm, see. I'm we'll gonna, see. I'm but gonna check it out and see. We'll see what they come. Apparently, up with. Eddie Jordan fans, at least if you like pink and purple shirts, <laughs> especially, pay attention to the live races in Britain. Otherwise, you're gonna have to get the Sky package. But let's come back with the loose news, the final segment of our week. Okay. And obviously, a feature every week. The loose news, the bullshit. <laughs> loose news, <laughs> I love that. The silly bits. Oh man, this this actually made me laugh. The the, the weak the stories. Loose Hamilton one. Yeah, loose close Hamilton. this down and turn us off YouTube. Yeah, turn us off. Turn it off. Turn it off. Turn it off. Press stop. Press stop. Turn it off. Wait, wait, wait. We're, but we'll we're, be back in a few we're, seconds. We're doing it like another one? Oh, yeah, we can do one more. Like, let's just do it right now. Let's, let's talk about it. this right now. Let's yeah. do it, let's let's do it right now. Stop and play. Stop and play. Stop and play. No. Okay. This All, right. Serious, stop this... All right, stop. All right, stop. Are we live? I dropped my mic on yeah, the we're internet. Back. I dropped my mic live on the internet. Yes, you did. You sure did, bud. Oh, shit. Okay, play this. Play this bullshit. Lewis Hamilton. This is number one? <laughs> okay, this is... And how much do you think he made? Believe me, I think he made like six million. No, six billion. And his name is what? Sorry, Lewis. <laughs> for the for the non followers of Lewis Hamilton's Instagram account, my driver said it looked like me. Part one. Basically, Lewis was taking uh, some sort of Uber truck to the to the airport or something. <laughs> his driver said he kind he kind of looked like a Lewis Hamilton, some Nigerian guy. <laughs> This is part two. Nobody is perfect. He know how to do it. He know he's perfect. So he's the best driver. He's the best driver. You know. Like he drives perfect. He's the best driver. He, know, he knows how to he's do driver. it. He's perfect. He's perfect. <laughs> is there a part three to this? Scroll down to the comments. We get the links below. There's on, there's only two parts. There's only two. Oh okay okay that that, that was it. <laughs> Um, uh, Toby Gruner confirmed that uh, that there's not going to be any refueling. This was this was a thing yeah. that was being thrown around. This came up. Yeah, we talked about this at the start of the show. Yeah, yeah. clearly, like this... what, what came today, like just completely dispelled. That, that was just a ploy to kind of get attention and and you know as a thing that the that the regulators could do. Oh, if the teams don't go our way, like we can bring back refueling because nobody likes refueling. Nobody wants refueling to come back. It doesn't mm-hmm. create. Uh, it doesn't create close call from Jean Tot saying the refueling equipment would only cost about 50,000 euro a year. Yeah, that was to ship to every race for all the teams man, combined. Which that was is, their bargaining shit chip. That, that, that was the a bargaining point. chip. Yeah. 50, 50 grand is nothing, you know, for an internet. Like, as far as the money spent by the sport, but it has been rejected, which I, I agree with. I agree with. Yeah, no, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have been, it would have been any good for the sport. For sure. No. Ferrari? <laughs> this Adam Cooper tweet? <laughs> At Adam Cooper. Um, this is a tweet. Adam Cooper is, sure, is, is an I'm F1 sure, journalist. I'm sure some people have had their suspicions in the past. I don't know. Anyways, Adam Cooper. At Adam Cooper F1. A yes. journalist. Who has tweeted. At Massa Felipe 19. The official That's Felipe Massa tweet. Twitter. Tells fans at the NEC that it's impossible to t- tweet to when pee. Drive, sorry, to pee. It's impossible to tweet, obviously. <laughs> impossible to pee when driving flat out. Flat out here. So he waits for a safety car. That's brilliant. <laughs> Hashtag too much info. For those watching the video, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. Open this video picture full screen. There it is. There it is. That's Felipe Massa. Peeing into a urinal. Take, urinal. Taking a leak with, still with his hands, <laughs> device, and helmet. Sorry. 20,000 people. That, that, yeah, that's 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 Felipe Massa's, um, <laughs> I guess, response to it. That's <laughs> hilarious. He's like, yeah, I pee all the time. Like, like, human, like humans <laughs> this do. This first time, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's brilliant. Uh, maybe maybe one, one more I got here. Ecclestone. Uh, no stranger to saying dumb things. Of course. Mm. Of course, of course. <clears throat> and women in racing, as we've been peripherally following throughout the career, the, sorry, the, the history of our podcast. Yes. On and off we really and want on, this to happen. On and off and on and off. This has kind of gone against it. Echo Stone said, women, in quotes, wouldn't be taken seriously 
if they did make it into Formula One. Yeah, but that's what he said about 17 year olds, and look at what what happened with Max Verstappen. That is what you happened what with I mean? Max Verstappen. Yeah, no, it's, it's, he's an idiot. He's he's right about many things, but he's proven to be wrong more recently about many more things than he's right. Absolutely separately, and absolutely related to this quote, though. Total Wolf. If you don't know, the wife of Mrs. Wolf. Right. <laughs> the Mrs. husband. Wolf, yeah. <laughs> the, hu- sorry, the, the husband of his wife, Mrs. Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> Susie Wolf. Yeah. Uh, um, Williams reserve driver. Right. right. Last year. I, I, right. Up, until, up until she quit because she was like, clearly, I'm not, I'm never, they're never going to take me seriously. She, she quit racing for reasons <laughs> we can all speculate, but she said officially that she is retiring from racing. That Mr. Wolf <laughs> Toto said Susie would make a good enough driver to drive for a midfield team. Well, if if that midfield team is uh, or is <laughs> the Lotus of last year, she probably is better than Pastor Maldonado. Let's be honest, she probably is. <laughs> so in he that, is, he's in that he's very German and very <laughs> to the point, but he's kind of a dick in and, the sense and, of telling his wife that you know you're probably good enough to. Go work for a midfield team <laughs> yeah <laughs> you're good for f1 yeah for a midfield team <laughs> like not it's, my, it's, not it's my team you it's, know. it's it's, it's kind of like saying like yeah you're probably the most beautiful girl <laughs> in the room <laughs> um, and i guess we can we can end with that and uh play us out dj oh yeah yes shit. we'll be back next week Hopefully with this new format, hopefully we'll improve hopefully it. Hopefully not. Yeah, no. <laughs> not with this format. Cheers. <laughs> uh, see you later, guys, and uh, yeah, subscribe. Um, I have Flat of Fever. Like I said, we're we're uh, we're experimenting with a new format. If you like it or not, let us know. Comment everywhere. Listen to Bamboo Flat Out Fever on Twitter. Flat Out Fever on Reddit. Email show at flatoutfever.com.
think we're ready right now. We live? Yeah. We're live again. We we're are back. live again. Okay, we'll keep this keep this down. Okay, so Manor. Okay, huge reshuffling. Yeah, rolling off of the last. They have not announced their um, release date or whatever they car, but they have tweeted. If you if you go through those links, I uh, one of those links is is um, about Manor. They have been homologated. There we go. I'm on the ball today, boys. You're on the ball. January 15th, our, in, our installment. Today, we have completed our final crash test. So now we have a fully homologated chassis. Next stop test, one in Barcelona. What a change from last year. Yeah, Manor, <laughs> Manor is ready. What a change from a few months ago. Check this out. Uh, John Booth and Graham Loden. We did a big piece on this about well, a month will, or so ago. Missed. Yeah. Well... This is kind of a slap in the face to them because they both said, this team sucks. It's kind of ruining my legacy. My career is getting <laughs> squashed down. This sucks for my future. I quit, right? Well, they, they, they just had some disagreements with the new management. Yeah, well, all, oh, yeah. I'm sure there was some of that in there. Bring up, can you bring up Nicholas Tombazis? T-O-M-B-A-Z-I-S. I believe the British people will call it Tombazis. Tombazis, yes. Oh, wait, is it not uh, Tombazis? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. So, Manor's ready to go. They have announced, hired, made public Nicholas Tombazis as their aero chief going forward, which is interesting. He worked for Benetton, McLaren, and Ferrari. For the last twenty three years, he's a guy. He's a guy with um, with experience. Yeah, he's Look a badass. There. there he is, right there, leaning over the Ferrari into well, the cockpit. Felipe Massa. Felipe Massa. <laughs> he's actually been Ferrari's chief design engineer for the past nine years. Hmm. Now he works for Marussia. Marussia has pulled him in. They've they've locked him down. He works for them now. Nice. They've got the Mercedes engine going forward. Okay. So a lot, a lot of uh, a lot of bright lights ahead of them. You know what I mean? Mercedes power. They've got a Williams gearbox for this year, which has proved itself. Right. Williams didn't have any problems that we know of with their gear bo- gearbox last year. No, not really. And also a tech partnership with Mercedes going forward. Or right. Sorry, with, sorry, not with Mercedes, with Williams. Right. With for the, Williams for the, for the whole drive uh, shaft or whatever. Yeah, for the whole the full drivetrain and yeah. any info gained off of that transmission. Uh, that's basically it, but and and then yeah, the, and their partnership with Mercedes that it's right. not Unfo- we to don't, be understated. We don't have a date yet for their unveiling. I'm sure they're gonna have some sort of exciting livery that they've put together, and uh, that's it. Uh, cool. Yeah. Right. Manor kick ass. Let's do it. Bring it up. Bring it up. Beat Sauber if they can beat Sauber this year. That would be some fucking big news, right? Yeah, though. Yeah, I th- I think I think they will, uh, and I think they're gonna be a midfielder to definitely watch. Um, them versus st- them, Sauber and Haas together it might be a interesting race. We still weekend. we still have to like this for the first find weeks. out exactly like who they're who they're gonna put in their cars, and you know I'm sure that that might change from week to week. But uh, yeah, it could change through the, throughout the year. Uh, uh, lots of interesting Rossi. stuff for for Manor, and uh, like really wish him all the best. You know that that team. Uh, the fact that they yeah, survived absolutely. 2015, <laughs> that, 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 that meant that they had, they went through some tough times and they're on the up and up and, you know, yeah, like exactly like you said, good luck to them. Yeah. The man, they out survived Caterham and HRT Hispania. They, they did it, man. Yeah. They've gone through a bunch of owners. They've gone through a bunch of principals and well, last year, man, around this time we were reporting about how their shit was being auctioned off. Remember? Yeah. There yeah. was a riot at the factory and yeah. they almost sold everything. Yeah, no, what 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 I'll turn around. It's good good for them. Anyways, we'll be right back with the final segment of the week. We're gonna do some odds and ends, some bullshit stories about Lewis Hamilton, some tigers, odd bits. <laughs> Thanks for listening. No, what what what? We're good. We're live? Yeah. On the internet? Forever? Yeah. Okay. What? Silly bits. Yeah, we are. Odd bits. So wait, wait, did you like yeah, stop it? Small stories. Started. We stopped. We okay. started. We're okay. back. This is the first time we're doing this. Let's start with something serious. Sauber, we were just talking about. Uh, one of, Obviously, one of the lower end teams. Obviously, had some trouble, as we talked about about a year ago, getting sued by Vandegaard. Vandegaard. Yeah. Yeah. 
Apparently, Adrian Suto has just had, in the past two days, uh, deemed admissible by the court of his home country of Switzerland that a lawsuit worth 3.5 million Swiss francs, which is equivalent to about 3.5 million U.S. dollars, almost the same, couldn't go forward because uh, Sauber told him to go fuck himself at the end of last year. <laughs> basically, the, basically the same story. Well, he was he, he was he was basically trying to do the same thing that uh, that uh, Rita van der Garde was <laughs> this time last year. <laughs> yeah, he basically tried the same thing. He came forward. But we did. We ran a story earlier today about Kevin Magnussen possibly overtaking Pastor Maldonado's fifty million dollar seat. With his seven million dollar sponsorship, Adrian Suto, who came to uh, Sauber, said that he had forty million behind him. So, basically, this this lawsuit has been given the green light to go ahead, him to hire lawyers, put his case together, and file suit, win money. Uh, Sauber has come forward saying that basically, Suto had acquired penalties in formula one okay. which negated his some of his driving skill at least he had poor performance he had no 40 million dollars that he <laughs> promised he had been in certain um press conferences and media days critical of the team and finally this is what i find the most hilarious yeah had stalled the car more than one time <laughs> he stalled the car Jesus So we, we will definitely be following this going forward But his lawsuit has been given the green light That he has enough evidence to challenge for three and a half million dollars For a cancel contract by the Sauber F1 team mm-hmm. To hire Adrian Sutil for last year, for 2015 So the, this, this would have been So the, the, the body that wouldn't have recognized that would, be, would have been the contract rec- recognition board Which is kind of all part of like the, the the system that F1 has to like settle any like contracts in between drivers and the teams. Right. Ba- basically Adrian Sutil is alleging that he had a signed contract with Sauber and they neglected to fulfill their end of it. The, for for Give last for last year 2015. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. The same. Yeah, his his lawsuit's coming late, but it's <laughs> more or less the same as Van der Gaard came except forward it's, with. except it's not going to work at all. Well, we'll see, but yeah, I doubt it. Mm-hmm. Separately, before we move on to some bullshit, Pope Francis, <laughs> he attended a some sort of a road safety event aimed at, I don't know, lowering the number of kids that got run over by cars and people get run over by cars and stuff. He held a public international prayer on Thursday, last Thursday. Okay. Praying for the life of Michael Schumacher. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hashtag keep fighting, Michael. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Have then, faith. Seriously. One second of silence. <laughs> well, just one second, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd like to see him come seriously, back. Seriously. No, yeah. See, yeah, see, yeah. Seriously. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, for real. Lewis Hamilton, you got some of those links ready? Yep. We got... Or, let, 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 okay, hold on. Since you got this up, let's let's talk about this first. Channel 4. Channel 4. We'll get, oh, to, yeah. the, we'll get to the bullshit before the semi-real news. <laughs> Channel 4, we talked about this before. Whisper Films, owned by DC. DC, David Coulthard, and one or two other dudes. They've been retained by Channel 4 to broadcast the coverage of 2016 Formula One season oh, on shit. Channel 4 in Britain, which has been taken over from the BBC, who sold their rights because they don't have enough money. They've announced the 10 races they will be showing live, which are Bahrain, Spain, Azerbaijan, the uni- international european grand prix actually can, can, can i just like say something real quick like just an, an aside to a, yes to, to, to the podcast and to f1 please um because i know that we have some british viewers and british listeners out there british people they are gutting they are gutting your public institutions right now 
you need to fight for the NHS. You need to fight for the BBC. What what the, the people that are wrong about this? Whether you're F1 not, fans or not, this yeah. is a small part. I'm 50 percent British. My mom was born in your country. She lived there. <laughs> there there she was nine, left, and went something back really crazy until her going late on. Teens because she didn't even like it outside of Britain. They want to turn I'm British. They want they want to turn Britain into like some sort of pseudo America. Don't let it happen. Like, look what's going on over there right now. Do not. They are playing the Great Britain Grand Prix and the testing that follows after it, Tuesday and Wednesday, or Wednesday and Thursday, whatever days, back-to-back with Hungary, which is actually two weeks later, those two races, skipping Germany, showing Belgium and Italy back-to-back, also one week apart, skipping a week, showing Malaysia, skipping a month... Back to Mexico and finishing the season with Abu Dhabi. For, they've announced, David Coulthard will be announcing each race. They will be. Um, Bahrain will his, be the his first. His team is yet to be confirmed. And now, remember that this is, was. <laughs> David Coulthard was in talks with the, the new incarnation of the BBC Top Gear to, to potentially be a presenter, but I guess he's yeah. no longer. He's, he's doing this instead. He's declined. Good for him. He's declined. He likes this better. But they will not be displaying or showing the Australia race mm-hmm. part, oh. part or the Canada race, part of the uh, five eyes, part of the goddamn Commonwealth, <laughs> <laughs> the base of the Commonwealth. None of that. But it's probably because it's not convenient. Like it's, it's not a, it's not, they're not played at convenient times for the British crowds. Yeah, they're not. But the Channel 4 has also announced that most likely... For the BBC fans, the Eddie Jordan fans, mm-hmm. he will be utilized in some way for the live broadcasts. <laughs> in some way. But keep in mind, for the other races, they will not be broadcast live. Australia, China, Russia, Monaco, Canada, Australia, Germany, Singapore, Japan, the United States, and Brazil. They will be doing some sort of highlight episodes and... News, etc. Some sort, some sort of whisper films treatment to the races. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Uh, well, we'll I'm, see. I'm we'll gonna, see. I'm but gonna check it out and see. We'll see what they come. Apparently, up with. Eddie Jordan fans, at least, if you like pink and purple shirts, <laughs> especially, pay attention to the live races in Britain. Otherwise, you're gonna have to get the Sky package. But let's come back with the loose news, the final segment of our week. Okay. And obviously, a feature every week. The loose news, the bullshit. <laughs> loose news, I love that. <laughs> the silly bits. Oh man, this this actually made me laugh. The the, the weak the stories. Lewis Hamilton one. Yeah, Lewis close Hamilton. this down and turn us off YouTube. Yeah, turn us off. Turn it off. Turn it off. Turn it off. Press stop. Press stop. Turn it off. Wait, wait, wait. We're, but we'll we're, be back like, in a few we're, seconds. We're doing it like another one? Oh, yeah, we can do one more. Like, let's just do it right now. Let's, let's talk about it. this right now. Yeah. Let's, let's do it right now. Stop and play. Stop and play. Stop and play. No. Okay, this right, serious, stop, stop. This all right, stop. <laughs> Again, yeah. Are we live? Did I drop my mic on yeah, the we're internet? Back. I dropped my mic live on the internet? Yes, you did. You sure did, bud. Oh, shit. Okay, play this. Play this bullshit. Lewis Hamilton. This is number one? <laughs> okay, this is... <laughs> and how much do you think he made? Believe me, I think he made like 6 million. No, 6 billion. And his name is what, sorry? 6 Lewis. <laughs> For the for the non followers of Lewis Hamilton's Instagram account, my driver said it looked like me part one. Basically, Lewis was taking uh, some sort of Uber truck to the to the airport or something. <laughs> His driver said he kind you kind of look like a Lewis Hamilton, some Nigerian guy. <laughs> this, this is part two. Nobody is perfect. You know how to do it. You know it's perfect. So he's the best driver. He's the best driver. You know. How Drives perfect. He's the best driver. He, know, he knows how to <laughs> do it. He's perfect. He's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a part three to this? Scroll down to the comments. We get the links below. There's on, there's only two parts. There's only two. Oh, okay, okay. That that, that was it. <laughs> um, uh, Toby Gruner confirmed that uh, that there's not going to be any refueling. This was this was a thing yeah. that was being thrown around. This came bef- up 
Yeah, we talked about this at the start of the show. Yeah, yeah. clearly, like this... what, what came today, like just completely spelled that. That was just a ploy to kind of get attention and and you know as a thing that the that the regulators could do. Oh, if the teams don't go our way, like we can bring back refueling because nobody likes refueling. Nobody wants refueling to come back. It doesn't mm. create uh, it doesn't create close. Call from Jean Tot saying the refueling equipment would only cost about. 50,000 euro a year yeah, that was to ship to every race for all the teams man, combined. Which that was is, a bargaining shit chip. That, that, that's that was a bargaining point. chip. Yeah. 50, 50 grand is nothing, you know, for an internet. Like, as far as the money spent by the sport. But it has been rejected, which I, I agree with. I agree with. Yeah, no, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have been, it would have been any good for the sport, for sure. No. Ferrari? <laughs> this Adam Cooper tweet? <laughs> At Adam Cooper, um, this is a tweet. Adam Cooper is, sure, is, is an I'm F1 sure, journalist. I'm sure some people have had their suspicions in the past. I don't know. Anyways, Adam Cooper, at Adam Cooper F1, a yes. journalist, who has tweeted, at Massa Felipe 19, the official That's Felipe Massa tweet, Twitter, tells fans at the NEC that it's impossible to t- tweet to pee. When drive, sorry, to pee. It's impossible to tweet, obviously. <laughs> impossible to pee when driving flat out. Flat out here. So he <laughs> waits for a safety car. That's brilliant. <laughs> Hashtag too much info. For those watching the video, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. Open this video picture full screen. There it is. There it is. That's Felipe Massa peeing into a urinal. Take, urinal. Taking a leak with, still with his hands, <laughs> device, and helmet. Sorry. 20,000 people. That, that, yeah, that's 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 Felipe Massa's, um, <laughs> I guess, response to it. That's <laughs> hilarious. He's like, yeah, I pee all the time. Like, like human, <laughs> like human this the first time, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's brilliant. Uh, maybe maybe one, one more I got here. Ecclestone. Uh, no stranger to saying dumb things. Of course. Mm. Of course, of course. <clears throat> and women in racing, as we've been peripherally following throughout the career, the, sorry, the the history of our podcast. Yes. I don't know. We really want on, this to happen. On and off and on and off. This has kind of gone against it. Echo Stone said, women, in quotes, wouldn't be taken seriously if they did make it into Formula One. Yeah, but that's what he said about 17-year-olds. And look at what what happened with Max Verstappen. That is what you know happened what with I mean? Max Verstappen. Yeah, no, it's, it's, he's an idiot. He's, he's right about many things, but he's proven to be wrong more recently about many more things than he's right. Absolutely separately and absolutely related to this quote, though. Toto Wolf, if you don't know, the wife of Mrs. Wolf. Right. <laughs> Mrs. The husband. Wolf, yeah. <laughs> the, sorry, the, the husband of his wife, Mrs. Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> Susie Wolf. Yeah. Uh, um, Williams reserve driver. Right. Mm. Last year. Right. I, I, up, until, up until she quit, because she was like, clearly, I'm not, I'm never, they're never going to take me seriously. She, she quit racing for reasons <laughs> we can all speculate, but she said officially that she is retiring from racing. That Mr. Wolf, <laughs> Toto said. Susie would make a good enough driver to drive for a midfield team. Well, if if that midfield team is uh, or is <laughs> the Lotus of last year, she probably is better than Pastor Maldonado. Let's be honest, she probably is. <laughs> so in he that, is, he's in that- he's very German and very <laughs> to the point, but he's kind of a dick in and the sense I, of telling his wife that you know you're probably good enough to work for a midfield team. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're good for F1, yeah, for a midfield team. <laughs> like not it's, my, it's, it's not kinda, my team. You it's know. it's, it's kind of like saying like, yeah, you're probably the most beautiful girl <laughs> in the room. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I guess we can we can end with that and uh, play us out, DJ. Oh yeah. Yes, shit. we'll be back next week. Hopefully with this new format. Hopefully we'll improve Hopefully it. Hopefully not. Yeah. No. <laughs> Not with this format. <laughs> uh, see you later, guys, and uh, yeah, subscribe. Um, I have a lot of fever. Like I said, we're we're uh, we're experimenting with a new format. If you like it or not, let us know. Comment everywhere. Listen to Bamboo Flat Out Fever on Twitter. Flat Out Fever on Reddit. Email show at flatoutfever.com.